Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to Four Player Podcast. This is episode. Uh, what are we on? Seven seventy one, I think. Oh, you know the one. I I couldn't remember if last week was seven seventy or seven seventy one. Seven seventy one. We've done seven hundred and seventy one of these fucking things. Welcome How to the are we show. Still counting. I feel like we should have already like given them subtitles by now. You know? What if we just rebooted and started from one? Just because I'm tired. It, it gets increasingly more ridiculous the higher the oh, number gets. You don't gets. even do one. You don't do one. You just call it the four-player podcast. The. You know, the reboot oh. with the the. Oh, okay. Well, I actually like that. I like that idea. Yeah. So, you, like, you just we do away with, with episode numbers altogether. Like, what if we just yeah. said tonight, 771 was our last numbered episode, and I just never the mentioned player it ever again. No, we got, no, 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 no. Give it six more weeks so we can end on 777. Yeah, you, oh, you gotta. Sure. Okay. We gotta what end on a doing? special number. Why are you playing straight into Chris Davis's arms? Like, what, like, what is that? Um, See, it's, okay. yeah, it's working. I didn't even bring it up to the time. No. Chris Davis, I'm pretty That's sure that's probably that would be. the one of the longest running like memes of how like we've been doing this for so long, and every time like a significant number, I guess in the you know history of numbers, uh, is coming up. Chris Davis is like, oh wait, God, I do something, and every single time, every single person on this podcast is just like, yeah, good, good luck with that, buddy. The well, one time we actually did it was episode 400, and it was pretty great. But um, that was I mean, I like considering it happens. The, the the special numbers come around like every two ish years. Like I think it's fairly reasonable to suggest, hey, let's maybe the do only, something. The only special number I care about ends in six nine. Okay, that's we all already, I'm saying. That's the only only special number. We two four seven zero them. six nine. Yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um. Anyways, welcome, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, I'm your host Nick Henderson, joined by Brad Simons tonight. Oh, we're recording. Yeah, yeah hello. Yeah. I, you're recording, right? I hope certainly. No, I'm hope recording. recording. I mean, we started. Yes, we yes, started. We've officially started. Uh, Crispy's joining us. Oh, were we supposed to record this? You shut up. You sh- shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chris Davis, of course, is rounding I, out the group tonight. I'm actually recording this, Nick. It's okay. Wonderful. Um, is that cup so of first, coffee filled to the top? No. I think it was just a reflection of the... He, he's put so much creamer in there that it's become so bright that it actually reflects on the inside of his, of his I, white cup. I had to clear out some old creamer. Like, it was at the very bottom, so I, like, yeah. Had to, it's it's, it's, it's brighter. I didn't get into creamer talk. I just more meant, you know... Didn't we do... Drinking you, so much brought you, brought the, you brought this upon us, Brad. Yeah, We're talking this. creamer. Are y'all, didn't we are y'all have just... a really? Didn't we have like an infamous conversation one time about creamer? And I can't remember what what the the crux of that was, but it was really disturbing. Can't Maybe be very infamous in, then. Mm, no, that one was. Yeah, the one somebody about in chat probably knows. Yeah, yeah it was um, something about. Oh, it was you saying that it was very cummy or something. That's cummy wummy. Exactly. Well, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, you did. There's you probably did. a clip of you I saying just, that. You drinking this coffee like y'all are college kids? I don't get it, but hey, whatever. Uh, this is the only way. I, this is the only way me, as an adult in my thirties, can now stay awake past like nine o'clock. So, it's, and this is half calf. Like it's okay. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Well, uh, anyways, welcome to the show. Uh, before we get started, a couple quick updates for anybody who listens to our show on the regular. A couple of important things you need to be aware of. One. 
Uh, if you're watching us live, we're obviously recording this episode on a Wednesday night, which is pretty uh, unusual for us. But starting next week, as in less than a week from today, we are shifting our recording nights from Thursdays to Tuesdays. And that's going forward for the foreseeable future. So if you mark these things on your calendar in any way, I don't know if any of y'all are weird enough to do that, but if that if you have a calendar reminder or something for our show recordings, switch it to Tuesday. Um, same time and everything, but Tuesday nights. Uh, don't say we didn't tell you. And two, if you are a regular listener to our show, I have... I'm trying to to collect some 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 data. I want to hear about how you guys listen to our show, where you listen to our show, whether it's the VOD, whether it's the audio recording, how frequently you listen. I just want to get a feel for that kind of stuff. And he wants his to, data set to be pure. I want I want a very yeah. pure. No he wants it so, pure. No. So only answer the survey if you've listened to a minimum of three hundred episodes. Uh, you know. <laughs> That doesn't seem unreasonable. If you can uh, name everybody kidding. on the podcast's favorite top three favorite video games, <laughs> okay, I wouldn't well, quite go that far. But okay, crispy, me, they can't me, do that for you because you have not done your top ten of all time. Oh, jokes on you! I don't like video games. I don't have a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the wrong show, buddy. Uh, <laughs> let me get this out. Let me get this out. So there is a survey we're doing. Um, we're exploring some ideas and we just before we make any decisions about the show going forward or anything like that, I want to get I want to get a feel for this stuff. Also, just there's there's a lot of weird shakeups happening right now, kind of in the podcasting ecosystem or whatever. Like Google Podcast is disappearing uh, in a couple of months. I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to do. That's what I use to listen to what all my podcasts. What is Google Podcasts? It is a Google service for subscribing to podcasts, Brad. It's like it's like iTunes, but for Google. I don't fucking know. The point is, there's just a lot of things happening, and I want to get a feel for how everybody listens to the show. So we would appreciate it so much if you listen to the show. It, I don't care if you discovered us last week or if you discovered us, you know, 10 years ago, whatever it is. If you consider yourself a regular listener to the show, please go find the link. It's posted in the announcements channel in Discord. I will also post it in the show notes for this episode on fourplayernetwork.com. I will post it in the show notes for the video on YouTube. Um, I use an app called Podcast Republic. I just looked. There we go. Podcast Republic. In fact, one of the questions on there is what app do you use or what platform do you use to listen to the show? I listed a few common ones, but there's an other category there. So if you use something other than that, write it in. Uh, we'd really, really appreciate it. Uh, it takes literally less than a minute. It's like five questions. So uh, if, you're, if you're watching us live, go do it. Like I said, the link is in Discord and all those other places I mentioned. So with that said, let's get to it. Uh, fucking what's everybody been up to? Let's. I don't know. I don't have a plan. It's how it's spooky season. Do you Anybody, not have a plan for this podcast? I don't, oh my, I don't know what to do with myself. Oh my god, but Nicholas, you're plan. such a diligent planner. Yeah. Oh my god. What if we? How about we just banter for a little bit? Then we get into yeah. No, well, actually, you know, yeah, Brad, you weren't on the show guys. last week. You weren't on the show last week, but uh, I started listening exciting. To the show. You started listening to the show. Did you even get oh, far oh, enough? You're, you're asking me what I've been doing with my time. Um, you know, stuff, you know, my fam's been sick. So, you know, I always right. kind of takes the wind out of all the cells. Um, right, but, you right. know, I've been kind of doing some spooky season watching and, um, stuff like that. Playing some video when you, games. When you, when you watch stuff for spooky season, right? Cause you, you're the kind of person, as far as I can tell, when, when, when spooky season rolls around, you just start watching a bunch of horror stuff. Do you predominantly watch horror stuff that you've like never seen before? Or do you like rewatch shit that you're like into? Um, what, I mean, in general, I'm, I'm not really like a rewatcher replayer in general. If right. it's something that I really like and like Malia hasn't seen, you know, then I might do a rewatch, but I'm not the kind of person that, you know, has like a bunch of go tos that I fall back on. I kind of always want to experience something new, honestly. So, yeah. What's the best thing you've watched so far? And in fact, this, this question season? goes to everybody. Yeah, this Ooh. spooky season with um, this Halloween. Also, Big Wazoo in chat wants to know what our favorite Halloween candy is. So, you know, if it, that's that, even his real name, if that is um, his real name. 
Favorite Halloween candy. Ooh, that's a good one. What is the best thing I've watched this season? I watched Totally Killer um, the other day, and I'm like kind of yeah, having a love we affair were with watching that movie. That, last that was night, so fun. I kind of walked out of the room. I was more into you Pikmin. Did... It, it's, uh. it's a... Uh, I'm not I'm not as into like the stabby stabby stuff. So when it's lots of like knifey stuff, I'm kind of like out, you know, it was funny. But but it had this weird like um, it it had this energy to it that made me think it was like a like a TV show, not like a made for like a like a like a TV show that's uh it had it um, had the TV show energy. Is that what you're saying? Like, I, yeah, it, it just it, like. You know, not like production value. Yeah, it had production good production. Value, it had good production value. What you, oh man, come on! That movie is so fun. That movie. Is I mean, it was, sc- it was Scream. It was cool. I saw somebody else. I've been watching. saying it was like Scream meets Back to the Future, but really, I heard somebody else compare it was like Scream meets Hot Tub Time Machine. I was like, that's actually probably a more apt description. <laughs> what? what this I mean, movie those, is. You're, they're y'all are saying the same thing, really. I guess that's true. But like, well, but like, but like. Well, one actually, cons- I, I don't know how to describe it. Back to the Future is, you know, I'm not gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to say. No, 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 I, I no. What? Back to the Future is what? No, I, like Back to the Future is like more concerned with like, not concerned, but like, it talks about like the science of how, like, even if it's fake science of like how this back shit works. The and this movie is just like of, we don't give a shit. Plot. I get it. this. No. High school kid is making a time machine, and turns out. She figured no. it out. It works. It's just fun. Back to the Future is the least concerned with its time travel mechanics. Hot Tub Time Machine gets more into like time travel shenanigans than Back to the Future Part 1 does. Back to the, Back the, future, to the future spends part. 90 seconds maybe thinking <laughs> about like how it works. The only reason why Back to the Future has a time machine is because that's how they decided to set up the premise of what if you went back in time and met your parents when they were your age and your mom you wanted to bang okay. you yeah. yeah okay that's fair that's fair i mean it could have been like doc brown only... could have been a wizard who like just zapped marty back but, in time. But the movie I, okay been okay the science is not important whatever but it's still like the will he like the stakes of the time travel are like sure. an important part of the plot all the way through the yeah. stakes of him getting home yeah like, that's what yeah. i'm talking about that's what i'm that, talking about that's like, not, like it's very it's very driven by that's not premise. like primer or anything it's driven it's no of course not okay look i didn't mean to get into into the no 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 back to the future versus hot tub time machine i'm just saying totally killer is like I, scream with hot tub time machine dna in there and it works beautifully you know what's interesting now that i think about it Oh, uh, well, no, I guess they both kind of, but I actually do really like Hot Tub Time Machine. Uh, it's a dumb movie, but I think it's kind of funny. Um, I was going to say that I think Hot Tub Time Machine has more of that, like, humor that's, like, grounded in the specific eras that, like, the characters are from and the era that they're visiting. I say that, but Back to the Future does a little bit of that, too, where they're like... Oh, well, who's the president in 1985? Ronald Reagan? Like, the actor? The actor? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't, about... I don't know. Yeah, what I don't know. What are we talking about? Fine. What movies like have we watched? Yeah. Has anybody watched any spooky stuff? I once Nothing. saw the new Exorcist as well on this past we weekend. You talked about that last week. Was it bad? Um, actually, uh, it... I read the synopsis and it was kind of... You know, uh... I don't think it was bad. I think it was just... I don't think it's it did exactly enough to as justify good as its Star existence. Wars and New Hope. Right? That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> okay. Y'all, that is becoming the worst meme on this fucking podcast or in this community. Whatever. <coughs> you know, whatever. I saw House the I saw the new Exorcist. It was it was really good. I enjoyed the Exorcist except for the fact that I just don't think it did enough to like justify its existence. Mm. It didn't yeah. it doesn't need to exist. It doesn't it doesn't need to exist, but Tell me about it. I had a good time watching it in the theater. It was fine. Yeah. So whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, anything else? Like, I've I, not watched anything spooky. I've watched. What is wrong with fun stuff? I'm not a spooky season partakener. Partakener? Partakener? Part. part-, part- what what is the proper grammatical word for that? Not partakener. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. Participant. 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 That'll work. Go. 
That's fair. Uh, I, I mean, I, I kind of like, like taking her though. Oh, I also watched that new Pet Cemetery. That was not very good. And and I wa- oh, I watched I Am Not a Serial Killer, which I totally thought was going to be just Young Dexter, and it turned out to be something completely different. Um, and didn't like it. So, oh, have you, know. you ever watched My Friend Jeffrey? Uh, no, the one with uh, with Hawkeye. Uh, Hawkeye. No, no, Jeremy oh Renner? God. Is it one with Jeremy Renner? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, oh. It, it's that kid from Hereditary. Oh. And, and no, like, he plays that. a kid who goes to school with Jeffrey Dahmer. And it's, like, about Jeffrey Dahmer being a fucking psychotic weirdo. weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's uh, really, really uncomfortable. Pretty good. I mean... Th- I feel like, I feel like if you if you make a movie about Jeffrey Dahmer or anything, it really is kind of intent to like the whole point is to make you very uncomfortable. Case in point, the Netflix show, super uncomfortable. Mm. <laughs> so, um, mm. Mm. yeah, I don't know. Huh? I, maybe we're not deep enough into spooky season to really be getting excited about spooky season yet. We're I don't a know. third of the uh, way through spooky season. Like I know, it like it really starts to happen. That stuff I, really starts to bubble to the surface around Halloween. I'm going to say something that's probably controversial here, but uh, spooky movies are pr- are probably the lowest priority for me as far as spooky season goes. Mm, okay. And and I don't I, will stop. I don't really know why. Just the way it is. I mean, like I'd like to hypothesize like maybe it's just the fact that you know that the spooks are going to come and end in 90 minutes. Do you mean like scary no. movies or do you mean like the whole genre, broad genre of like the f- horror films, like spooky films? Like, are you are you specifically referring to movies that scare you or are you talking about all a horror? Yeah, uh, like you don't want to watch a goofy, uh, uh, you know, uh, anthology focus, focus. or something, you know. Like a VHS movie or Look, something. I don't have anything against horror movies. There's, there are horror movies I'm that I genuinely I'm like. I'm, just, I'm saying, I want you to clarify. Our, when Would you, you say, let me, give me some please. runway. Let me, give me some runway to land this answer, okay? But I didn't get my question out. Oh, I'm sorry. What is your question? I'm saying, when you say you don't watch spooky movies, are you specifically referring to scary movies? Or are you talking about like the broader genre of like campy and silly, like all horror <laughs> stuff? Just for clarification. Uh, b- both, maybe. Like you, you, I don't you really look at art for the season. Like I, I didn't know what you were getting at. Oh yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really planning my watching around whatever's going on in the real world. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, except maybe when it was like, like when Paul Rubens died, I watched, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. You know, mm. like that. But like, I'm not like. It's not like. Ooh, it's October. Time to watch scary movies. If this is a scary movie, I'm just gonna watch it. Mm. But it's but a very watching spooky season. movies is like. It's a very it's, like. Yeah, it is a vibey season, but like, I don't necessarily need horror movies to set the vibe. And I don't know. I it, it's not like I'm against it. It's just I don't do it. You guys are all like 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 weirdos nick you're well, not weirdos but nick you're going like i'm gonna watch a scary movie every day in october okay, and it's that's like what i was starting dude, to I say not give up on that because even I, like what are we on the 11th and i've watched four movies yeah i like <laughs> so I, I do feel like there is an essence of trying too hard where it's like man i just i have a job like i don't need another one you know what i mean I just I like know. to challenge myself sometimes, but the moment the moment I start to slip, I'm like, eh, whatever, it's not going to work out. So you're yeah. saying uh, you're not a part of this conversation, crispy? That's I'm the- s- no. He <laughs> asked if we were watching anything good, and I have been watching good stuff, but it hasn't been spooky. Um, okay, what 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 have you been watching? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! Fuck me. Sorry. Uh, Kit Kuno what? in chat says he's the saw saw X was saw surprisingly 10. good. Have you seen I actually that? got tickets to see Saw Ten twice. But had to cancel them twice for different reasons. Okay, uh, interesting part so, of the story there. I, I mean, um, I'm saying. By I, the way, Kit Kuno did not take that. that survey. That was the joke I was trying oh, to make. Continue oh, because he's a first time chatter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stop on me. Sorry, you uh, you have not qualified for the premium survey, Kit Kuno. Kino. 
I'm not. Gonna, um, I'm just not going to involve you in any of these. Dis- I'm just going to do. I'm going to make all these decisions, all these back end like decisions for like helping us. Yes. Grow, why haven't you learned that lesson, Nick? <laughs> Man, fuck uh, you're me. Doing a good job, Nick. <laughs> We're eventually gonna talk right, about video right, games what tonight. What, what I have swear you to seen, God, Crispy. We're shooting from the hip. I've been watching Star Trek. Star Trek Lower oh. Decks is in season. It's great. Love it. And That's because I'm in a Star Trekky mood, I've been going back and watching a bunch of Star Trek. Because God knows, I fucking love it. Any the good them has been represents on Star Trek. In Star Trek. Excuse me. Any good Halloween episodes in Star Trek? Uh, yeah, there's spooky episodes. There's, there are. Uh, there was that um, Enterprise one with the with the evolution virus thing that was going mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I like when a when a a TV app like takes like oh, the yeah. Halloween episodes from different shows and like puts them on the same like section or whatever. There's a really good one where that star that guest stars Michael McKean. Uh, an episode of Star Trek Voyager where a few of the crew members, including Captain Janeway, get trapped in these, like, alien Matrix pods, and they're stuck in, like, a perpetual dream world that is ruled by a sadistic clown played by Michael McKean. And uh, it's pretty cool. And then, like, at the end, at the, like, the ending of it is, like, legit, like, wow. Oh, kind of chilling. It's, and you would have no up. desire to like track down that episode and watch. Oh it no, I'll watch month. that. I'm gonna watch that. I'll watch well, the shit out maybe, of that. Maybe maybe you should track down all the Halloween episodes of Star Trek and watch them this season. You know that way you can not have to give in to the spooky season completely by still being a Star Trek nerd. But then you can still get the kind of the vibe. I love the vibe, man. But you, you know, even Ooh. even when I was a kid, I liked watching fucking. The Halloween episodes of like Home Improvement or whatever dumb shit was on TV, you know. Fucking a, you know what's this weekend? The Fall of the House of Usher. You think that's on gonna Netflix? be good? Oh my god, uh, what, yes! What, I love what everything is, what that, the, that he's uh, done on Netflix. Netflix. It's gonna come oh, out of you? your mouth, Nick. Do you? I don't even I've know. I've not seen it all. Are you but, kidding um, me? You so so. My question: How was Midnight Club? Oh, uh, actually, I haven't watched that. Oh, one. so you're not a real fan? Okay, what Fuck were you saying, Crispy? I forgot that was him. It actually, no, I, just, I, I, I think he was just a producer on that one. I don't think he was mm-hmm, like sure. I, but I, I think I that's the case for some of these shows. Actually, I actually have heard pretty good, pretty good things. Because Bly Manor, I, I think, was more of like a producer situation, right? No, Bly Manor. I think he was fully involved with no, Bly I Manor. Think I think you should do a little research on that one. Oh, oh shit. Oh, the shit. Haunting of oh. Hill House, The Haunting of Bly Manor, Midnight Mass. All three of those shows, I, I. Adored. Oh. Oh. I liked. I liked. I liked Midnight Mass. I liked, you know, the first like ninety percent of Hill House. I guess eighty percent gets what? a little. But I didn't watch the other stuff. Okay. Well, Weird. I'm just saying. I guess Fall I of House really like of Usher. Of Fall of House of Usher. Uh, I mean, it's just it's 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 his last like kind of go around with anything with Netflix because it's like the last he's this is the last thing that's like fulfilling his Netflix contract or whatever. So it's the last thing that he's I guess going to be doing with Netflix. So I'm super eager to. It made me want to. Up. Like Midnight Mass is such a good like premise, but then I remembered. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Thirst? Uh no. It's a Korean movie from the director of Old Boy and other things. Um it's also about like a priest who becomes like a vampire and it's very like similar energy of like well, you know, this is a thing from God. Well, whatever. Let's move on. Mm, I've uh, watched that. Fantasy critic. <laughs> hey, here's the here's the thing. We're doing this on Wednesday, right? So we it's Usually the fancy critic stuff closes on Thursday, so we don't even have any fancy critic updates to really talk we about. Oh, have you haven't been here. Up- updates. We have updates. We have updates. Oh, I got an update. I'm, yeah, give Just us a You're not updates, paying then. attention. Doesn't mean I'm not paying attention. Then take the reins, bitch. I suffered. Critic. It's it's getting kind of interesting. First of all, I suffered a grave blow to my score. No one noticed because everyone's checked out. I guess. Um. But a shitty Switch port of War Tales came out. Like a PC ass PC game. And they put it on Switch? What? What the fuck? 
Ooh, and the thing is that, that game did not you. have a lot of reviews. Well, it had reviews, but you know how Open Critic does the stupid fucking thing where only some are good enough to like actually count towards the score. So if it's a very it's if it's a game that doesn't have a lot of reviews, there's very little. I mean, this is what happened with Storyteller, right? Um, GameSpot gave it a four out of ten, and it got so few reviews that it really dragged. It, the score it was down. never able to dig itself out. Yeah, that hole. it was. It's it like. My you only God. got nine points from it. Um. Okay. What are you? There's a fucking story here, Chris Davis. It was at a seventy-three, and it went down. It was at it was at an eighty-three, and it went down to a seventy-nine from one review of that bad switch port. So I lost Ooh. four points from one review. Well, maybe nobody else will review on a bad it. Switch port. You were talking no, about I like mean, it was a gigantic blow will. to you. So like I don't. Well. The reason I bring that up because um, some people are still in the game, Chris Davis, that person I'm referring to is Nolan. The the reason I bring up Nolan and, you know, Crispy is too, obviously. I'm not saying. Yeah, fuck me. Right. But well, you're not. But (laughs) Crispy is too, obviously. But but the reason I'm bringing up Nolan is because not only are our lists almost complete, but every single game, almost every single game is actually out. So we both have very high scores and they're getting close together. And now that I lost like four points off of war tells Nolan, I believe is 15 points behind. What makes this interesting is that we each have three games left, but he hasn't drafted. He hasn't actually bid on his, but the thing is one of my three games is very likely not going to get 1.0 this year. So it's going to be a zero pointer, which means he had, so while he's 15 points behind, he's sort of like he's got one extra game to make it up. So if if the three games that his final three games that he drafts that he bids on, if they score better than uh, Persona, Tactics and Mario RPG, and then the last one just has to make up that 15 point difference, which means, you know, then then he 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 beats me. But so it's just it's just getting interesting now that we're kind of getting down to it with some of these lists that you can really kind of like the math is getting really close now. You know, obviously there's crispy, right? But he still has he still has a lot of stuff that still needs to come out, and like of course, Space Marine is still a big question mark. Like that that whole me versus Nolan thing is also under the premise that Space Marine doesn't make it, which I still don't believe it's going to make it. Um, sorry, crispy. It's gonna make it. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna make it. It's gonna Whereas, make it on hey, December thirty first. Like I said, I hope it comes out and it gets like a seventy-seven. Suck it, crispy. We know you it's want to. It's gonna come out. It's gonna get a ninety-two. No, you. Well, you <laughs> and we're all on. gonna be like, that's wild. Say the magic words, crispy. You, you but haven't yeah, said them yet. But yeah, oh, Space, Space Marine Two oh, right. is just as, as good a chance of getting like a ninety plus as. City Skylines 2 and uh, Like a Dragon Gaiden has a chance of getting 100. So like... Yeah. That's no. yeah. I think it's so if you do the math, Chris Davis is out. That's We we, we know. But the, the I can thing get about, double hundreds. It's certainly possible. <laughs> but the, 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 the thing about... It could happen. And Crispy has a fucking Mario game, right? It, it's... But really... In Car- if you look at Carlos, he probably he's probably not going to make it. Nick, you're probably not going to make it, but you still have a lot of like space to. Uh, I, will, I only have points for like four or five games. It, if, if you get like if you get like incredibly lucky, I mean, it, it's hard to even calculate yours, right? Because you're you're still kind of like you have a lot of space. Guys, yours is but barely. This is but you have, you have been is, going draft crazy. That's the thing. This um, is wait. That I Sonic haven't? game was a mistake. The Sonic game was a mistake. Yeah, but yeah. Say so this is the was. deciding week for me because I I was just like fuck it, and I went for that new Sonic game. Uh, I don't even remember what it's called. <laughs> Sonic Superstars. Yeah. Sonic Superstars comes out in like six days, which means reviews will be dropping soon. And if that if that sinks, I just give I give up. I just I fucking think give up. The the bigger <laughs> question for me about your lineup is the choice of Deca Police. I mean, well, that's, that's not going to make it. Deca Police is not going to make if it. If Deca Police co- doesn't, I, so mean, I got it for like a dollar. So, like, if it if it comes if it gets delayed, I just drop it and pick something else. It won't. Um, it, it's not coming out this year. But but the I thing mean, is, everything about they've that game, said, everything they've said about that game, even as recent as Tokyo Game Show, was 
coming later this year. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what they were saying about Talos You don't Principle pay attention too. like Brad pays attention, Nick. Oh, here we and go. He, yeah. And and I was listening to, um, I think it was uh, Tetracast or whatever, RPG site podcast. And they had people there at TGS. And they were talking to like the rep guy that was there. And it was more like, uh, so is this really coming out this year? And he was like, yeah, you know. It was very much a, they just haven't said it yet. Um, so, but whatever. W- Wait, when they do, so that, they'll, they'll say it. That's something we should be putting stock in is what some guy at a booth said without actually saying anything? I mean, if they're um, a rep for the product, maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, but he's not Nick, allowed to say also, anything one way or the other. Third hand conversation. There's also, also the date is just quote 2023 and it is October which is also not a good sign. I mean, there's lots of signs pointing to delay. Um, I mean, the whatever. point is at this point, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to fill my fucking list. The 20, well, yeah. you certainly will. I mean, that's again, that's always fine thing. I mean, we dozens of games come out every week. What's my, reason? a lot of those have been scoring. What reason do well. I have to even bother at this point? Is <laughs> my question. Um, because, um, do you really want to give either Nolan or Brad $50? I don't. I mean, well, I'm no, gonna he, give. He might still have to, anyways. Unless but, you're in but, first place, you're giving fifty dollars. <laughs> but but the thing is, um, if you're like, uh, maybe maybe you don't get to play next year if you are a spoil sport. So you better try. You know. Oh. Well, that's just a rule you pulled out of your ass. <laughs> Daddy's uh, home. shit. I mean, <laughs> I, I I think I think um, you have to buy in to next year. Not only before we start, but you have to pay the fucking winner of this year. We we really fucked up by not putting the money. Is in there a pool any world in which you didn't we think we were, were going to kind of fuck up the first time? Like we did, like we we're literally learning how this fantasy critic stuff works. In no, real I know. Time. I'm just so saying like, you cares? you collect the money for the pool before you whatever at the start. That's true. But that's whatever. true. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, uh, you know. So yeah. Th- I, Things are getting interesting. Things are still coming out. No, of course, things are still coming out. Did All we right. strictly deny the choice of sports games? I don't remember. Uh, we don't do yearly uh, installments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless okay. annualized fall under yearly you... installments. Okay. Also, don't. Also, don't. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to suggest it, but I just, I'm just looking at the calendar for what's coming out, and I was like, NHL 24 is coming out. Like, I don't know. Um, are you trying to like get someone else to pick up a lemon? Because what? <laughs> first of all, your list is full. Second of all, no, that's not going to score well. I'm just, I'm just trying to look and see what Nick could theoretically pick hey, out. I don't, need your, I don't need your help. I don't need no, anybody's no. help. Nick's just I... talking. There's so many games. <laughs> There's so yeah. many games. He could bid on the no. RoboCop game that's coming out. I'm not. I'm I mean, not. He can, or he can make smart choices. I mean, it's fine. RoboCop it's fine. is getting really good previews from the demo. It is still going to be a 70 at best. Uh, uh, Chris rude. Davis, that does not translate to what you think it does. So stop it. Hey, Taeyeon deserves love, okay? They tried. I didn't saying, say they did. I'm not, I saying, say they I'm did. not saying defunct boy band in chat. I'm not saying RoboCop is going to be bad. I'm just saying even if this RoboCop is better than anyone expected, it's not going to pull. It's not going to be some huge points earner as far as fancy critic goes. Um, exactly. And that's fine. Not everything has to be. I'm just, but he needs to get to lucky with, with choices, some indies hitting in the low game, 90s or something. Yeah, if, if you're trying to win at this point in the game, you, you got to be making smart choices. Uh, and and, you, and you need to be you need to be finding a House of Fate Morgana or whatever that fucking hey game you know, is called. That's like a hundred percent on Metacritic. Right and now, un- I'm still sitting at about 30 points, which is lame. But I have Alan Wake 2 and Talos Principle 2 coming out in the next 20 days. Um, mm-hmm. And I think those are both going to be points earners. Got some bad news about Talos Principle 2. You don't, sh- don't do that to Nick. Don't hurt him. Shut mm. up. Sorry. Oh. I mean, it's fine. I'm sure the game will be fun. I just... Impressions of that demo were like technical disaster. That demo was also not even part of the actual game. It was like made for the demo. So like who the fuck even knows what that thing is in relation to the actual game itself. That first game was like super fucking smooth. I would be shocked if they released this game and it's like 
some choppy mess. But also, knock on fucking wood. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here, Brad? Take it away. You're the new host of this podcast. Okay. Uh, video games. Oh, God. Is it well, time? How or, about or news? Wh- like, there is literally no news. I mean... There's nothing positive to talk about, really. Yeah. Well, you know, we didn't really talk last... W- oh, here's one thing we didn't really talk about last week. I think it came up briefly in four-player minute, maybe. Um, it's actually kind of a shame that no one's not here tonight because uh, the word... The news swirling around the uh, the Last of Us multiplayer project is that that game has been put on indefinite ice mm-hmm. and that people, contract workers that were working mm. on that game have been laid off. Yeah, um, it certainly sounds like Naughty Dog is scrapping that. I mean, obviously, n- nothing. I th- saying that not set no. in stone, obviously, but like it's all signs seem to point to they're shifting their focus and moving back towards what they're what they know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I don't think that game was working out in their favor, so they're probably just cutting their losses. That's that's my take on it. Um, I mean, maybe, but like, I think we also got to remember that things PS5 slim. get canceled for other reasons beyond the quality of the product that they were developing. Sure. Uh, I mean, well, I, mean, I think it all. I think like just assuming quality- that this was the right move is not. I mean, there's no reason to assume that. You know, that's true. That is true. I mean, but, I, you know, it's probably all tied back to money in the first. Place. It's just a matter of like Naughty Dog has a certain amount of and this is me speculating, but Naughty Dog has a certain amount of like sway when it comes to overseeing their projects or whatever. And like, I have a feeling Naughty Dog is kind of like has some control over like whether or not they release a product that they're working on. And if mm. if the people at Naughty Dog aren't happy with the product, they might okay. have well yeah, evidently okay. all this yeah. kind of stems if from Neil so, Drugman ain't happy no one's happy That's well what <laughs> evidently what has happened according to the reports about this is that Sony had Bungie come in and did a uh, do a project review to see well, yeah, where it was no, so, so we did the, we talked about that months ago like we've had this is the second round of bad news around this project like this yeah. is the second time we've had rumors of like the project is in is having problems the first one being when Bungie did their, they went around and they analyzed all of these uh, uh, service titles, service titles, and they they didn't have a lot of great things to say about the Last of Us project. So which things is, were already seeming kind of rocky. Which is uh, the other cheek of them, because <laughs> yeah. Destiny like, Destiny's Destiny. been having some problems. Well, I, I know, mean, like, so, like Sony buying Destiny for, for like, because of their ex, quote unquote expertise in service <laughs> games, just seems kind of, dude. It's it's well, kind of depressing. Like the number of people who are like, oh, the final expand, the final shape's coming out next year. I don't like like the number of diehards on like Destiny the game Reddit is like people who are just like, I think I'm done. Is insane it's so sad it's so sad yeah, to watch. but it's also everything. like but also des- regardless, no, but not like this man it's been re- regardless of the quality of destiny because you know destiny has its own set of issues obviously but like regardless of its of its quality destiny is probably one of the most prominent success stories you know this side of like right, right. Fortnite, i guess or what you know i like uh. So like picking up Destiny because like like they still have a massive fan base and they're still we're still talking about Destiny and it's been years yeah so yeah but 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 I've always got this surprising. vibe from Destiny that it's 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 popular like a lot of people play it but not like it seems like a series that's probably not super profitable it feels expensive it's it yeah and I mean like a huge a huge part of the current the climate of the of the fandom is that the game is trying too hard to squeeze more money out of people like yeah. it's it's yeah. like like the eververse stuff's out of control 
the the stuff like and and they're not even like fulfilling promises that they said that they were going to be doing like like making new ritual armor sets every uh every season um and then i yeah i don't know like it, so, it there's a lot of like we're doing a lot of development on this game but we want everything that we're developing to be like more money for the player right like well, they're not it, doing a lot on the free end it's in general, it sounds like Sony's kind of uh, a lot of these uh, games as a service ideas are kind of not really panning out. I mean, they shut down, uh, I think, a couple of them at this point. Right. Yet, it, especially yet if you Sony count the Naughty is still Dog doubling one. down like Sony's recent like I forgot it was, it was like a 10 year plan or something that or maybe it was even a five year plan was to be, to have like some like. 15 like how, or so service games or how something like recent that. was that though jim how ryan talked just about that like six months ago like it's i know not, it's, but jim ryan just retired and they've canceled some of these games as, is, as a service since then and all this you know infinite wealth that happened uh in the past few years when covid hit with these companies now they're starting to like go uh stuff ain't money ain't free anymore and they're shutting down projects and they're firing people they're shutting down studios and a lot of it seems to be games as a service stuff so it, it I seems mean, you like are right if, if that with jim it ryan seems like out, maybe jim ryan leaving has something to do with this failed games as a service plan i mean it could be it could be part projects. of that and also just a good way to be like to kind of like save face it's like when they do start closing studios are canceling these kinds of projects or walking back on statements about wanting this many service games that can be like well that was jim ryan's that was Jim Ryan's yeah. future as Sony, and he's obviously not here anymore, so we're doing things a little bit differently I'm now. I'm worried we're never going to see that Twisted Metal game. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm that's... fairly certain that was probably going to be some sort of games-as-a-service game. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that sucks, maybe. I, I mean, who knows if it was even going to be any good, but I, I like mean, the... You know. Who, who knows? But getting back to kind of just the original thing we talked about, like Naughty Dog that project is still in trouble. Um, yeah. And I don't know what this means for... As far I as mean, I'm concerned, I, it never existed, so... <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably it's probably best to just kind of at this point kind of assume that the next thing we see from Naughty Dog is either going to be a new IP or a sequel to a franchise. You know what I mean? Like, it, like it's going to be like a single-player, story-driven, probably third-person action-adventure game, which is what they do very well. It's kind of... They're kind of in a Remedy situation, right? Where it's like... Crispy likes to say that Remedy makes one kind of game, but they've gotten better at it over the years, and that's what they do best, and they kind of embrace that. And I think Naughty Dog kind of does the same thing, for better or worse. Speaking of Remedy, Nick... Naughty Dog has an oeuvre, and Remedy has a rut. That's how I would describe that, but okay. That's a really negative way of putting that, (laughs) Crispy. (laughs) I think Remedy does great games, um... Mm. You're just you're They're just... classic games, not so much though, right, Nick? Shut up. What is with you speaking coming after of me on Max which? Um no, hey, are you hey Nick, are you gonna buy a PlayStation Slim? No. Good. Oh I'm yeah. Proud of you. I'm what actually you, proud why, of you. why would I? That okay, first of all, before we get before you really get into it, can we just be clear? Like that PS5 Slim thing, that is not like PS5 Pro. It's literally just replacing it's not, the of course mod. It's not. It's but, it's but it's, it's targeted no, at people who don't have re- PS5s yet. You, people are not to be selling. P- it's replacing the PS5. Yes, it is the new PS5. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes with the, these revisions, you know, they they get processor much or not like uh, stuff changes to make things. You know, maybe maybe just a little bit snappier, a little little bit faster. This happens are, all are the time. You, is yours, with the is your PS5 experience suffering right now for any particular? No, like, are you noticing you. slowdown? Of course, I'm not going to buy it. Christ. No, no, no. I know. I'm saying, I know you're not going to buy it, but like, why are you assuming I'm going to? Oh, I don't know. Shiny and new. I don't know. I don't if, don't if, think it, if this was a PS5 it. Pro and it was actually like they're talking about like specs or something, making it a better gaming experience, there might be an argument there that I might consider buying it. Yeah. But yeah, this is obviously pro, I, I, this is obviously yeah, not bad. I know. I know. Mostly just kidding. This but, uh, I, I do. I do wonder for people if... who haven't who haven't made the plunge yet, who haven't taken the plunge and gotten the PS5 yet. Um, it is well, so... interesting though that 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 there's an they're making the drive detachable. Atta- 
detachable or attachable or like sold separately. It's their non-committal is... way of going towards an all digital future, but like not. No, quite. but but that's good though, right? <laughs> that that that's that's like a that that's a direction back in the in the right direction, right? Like uh, that that's that's one step away from the all digital future, right? You know, not towards. Yeah, it. I think it's more so, of a so meeting like, people a in the middle sign. situation. You know what I mean? It's like we want to go towards but an all digital future, but in like the middle is a step back, right? Because these um digital consoles were like SKUs that a lot of people were buying. I heard some like crazy fucking number that like the um the S model of the fucking Xbox, the dig mm-hmm. is that one does that one have a drive? Actually I don't know. No, no. it doesn't. Yeah, no, it does not. So 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 that one outsells like the big boy? Which seems I mean crazy. that's probably purely based on price. Almost guaranteed. Yeah, but that's like that's not even a 4K like console. That thing I know. is weak, and it's crazy that 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 one is outselling it. So and they I shot themselves in the lower... foot because now it's holding back all their projects. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is I I it's got me thinking that these digital consoles were kind of doing really well. So so to see them come up with a skew that kind of puts a pushes it back in the direction direction of physical is good. You know that's a good thing, right? Because I'm not going to be able to play Alan Wake too. Because I'm not going to buy that, and that sucks. And I don't want that future. But it's <sighs> it's also shitty the fact that so the drive is being sold separately for eighty dollars, yeah, and they price are price. and they are raising the price of the base PS5 to four fifty. So mm-hmm. like so, you're so ending quick, up spending for clarification. For clarification, is this is this one skew or is this two skews? It's two skews. it's two skews. One of them comes with the drive. Um, and and that's another. 500. Yeah. Okay. I was kind of under the impression they were just consolidating down to one SKU without a drive at all, but like you could buy, and then you could go and buy the external drive if you wanted. Yeah, it's but more expensive. But all, all tech is just sort of going up. It, it's it's better than raising the price and not even doing a new SKU, which they already did. So <laughs> yeah, at least it, this time, it's it's a, it's a different product. My, my um, thing is that... That's just embarrassing. If it costs you four hundred fifty dollars next month to get a PS Five Slim, what is the price of the PS Five Pro this time next year when it launches? I mean, probably a lot. is that is that a six hundred dollar console? Five, no, it's probably. I'm gonna guess five hundred. I don't think so. It, it, either either that or it's not anytime soon. It's not going to be next year. I mean, my assumption is that the PS5 Pro, when it launches, will be the same price as the original PS5 when it launched, which was what, 500? I don't remember. But they're releasing yeah. a new SKU for 500. Yes. This year. You're right. telling and me then, a year from now that they're going to release a more powerful one for 500? Well, a, a, a year from now, uh, here's the thing. A year from now, they're going to release a Pro. This is my. This is just me theorizing. A year from now, they release a Pro. It's five hundred dollars. It's let's say it's a year since they dropped this slim model. They're gonna the, the slim model now be, is which is replacing the existing model is now just the standard PS Five. So that's just gonna drop yeah. in price like it would any like any other. You mm-hmm. know, if you're getting the base model, it's, it's just soon. gonna drop in price. I don't know. I mean, that's yeah, just what my are we talking about. What are we talking about? I don't know. Nick, We're, you wanted to talk Nick. about hardware, bitch. Here we are. We're digging into hardware. Are, are we? Are we gonna transition to games before our break? No, we're going to take a break and then we're going to talk about games afterwards, which we can, if you want, we can take our break now yeah, and then we can come back and talk about games. Let's take a fucking break. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed Mirage. We're going to talk about El Paso elsewhere. And we might let Brad talk about Star Ocean Second Story demo. If he's nice. Um, if he's nice, we'll let him, we'll let him talk. About he got that. bumped on a previous episode. Yeah. We, Make we, him bumped we, again, uh, motherfucker. Yeah, we 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 punish Brad. We uh we we No, it's not me. Back. It's you punish the the poor Japanese RPG. Yeah, yeah. I I took out my my distaste for J, for JRPGs on Star Ocean. Uh mm. so fuck me. All right. Anyways, we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Fuck. Bring it, bring it in, bring it in, Nick. People want Fuck. to hear about El Paso elsewhere in the Star yeah. Ocean demo. Get a grip. All right, we're gonna we're gonna sandwich we're gonna sandwich this Assassin's Creed conversation between two pieces of bread. 
bread. Brad uh, bread. The, the Brad bread. The first the first slice of bread being El Paso. El Paso. No, I think the El... first slice of bread is Star Ocean. Nick. Fine, do it. You, why am I even hosting this show? Why Why do I even bother? Come back to the show, to by the way. No, fuck yeah, these welcome people. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> We got to get uh, we got to get Star Ocean out of the way now. So fuck these people now. Go again. fill out that survey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, please do. Star Ocean um, Two is back for the second time. Y'all excited? Uh, I'm actually kind of interested in playing this, but uh, you're you're never gonna believe me, and you're gonna you're just gonna accuse me of. of no, uh, I be- I believe you say these things. I mean, you're not gonna play it. But, I, I, I mean, I believe I believe you say that you're interested. I believe you when you say you're kind of interested because it is very pretty, right? It which looks is, gorgeous. Which is the thing, right? Which is, is the eye-catching thing initially. The, so Square Enix has kind of been doing these remakes for a while to varying degrees. Um, you know, HD 2D remasters, semi-remakes, whatever. This is the most like visually striking, I think, remake that they've done um, from like original to what it looks in its final form. Right, right, um, right. And I, I think it's turning heads, right? Because it's there's lots of blue and wind stuff. Oh, I like the right? menu. Like the way like the well Yeah. I don't know if functionality wise, but I like the way like when you went to the menu, like all the no, characters. No, no, no. Kind of this is in. this is like a it full blown nice. remake. There's a lot of like this is like a high effort remake of a PlayStation One classic question mark. Uh, I also say classic considered question the best because... in the Star Ocean series is that accurate? so? That is the thing, right? It is it is often considered the best in the Star Ocean series, which is a series. What is happening? Which is a series know. that has not. God, you know, it's like Wild Arms or something, right? There's a lot of entries, but I don't think any of them are exactly like, you know, often considered to be like best of the genre i mean the playstation one era had a lot of those rpgs right like really legendary like best rpgs you know ever right you know you got your final right. fantasies and your sui codens and whatnot and and you know even even some of the more you know fringy stuff from like square soft at the time like xenogears and vagrant story i mean there's a lot of legendary ones and this is sort of like in those conversations if you're talking about like best rpgs on the playstation but when you start right. getting into like the broader genre best rpgs of all time people kind of stop mentioning star ocean which is fine right it, it, it's it's interesting that this is the game that some of the games that they're picking to get like these remakes are a little odd because this does seem high effort. Like this seems like, like a pretty loving remake of a game that a lot of people like, but again, Star Ocean is not like a huge series, even if this is like the one people like the most. And this is not even the first time that this game has been remade. Right. So it's a little weird that it's being uh, remade again. Aren't aren't people just kind of, when they see these kind of like obscure 2d HD remakes are, like is is the re, is the reaction not well that's cool but like why are you not doing the obvious choices <laughs> like no well so, like, so this is not really a, six this is, chrono triggers you know what i mean like, exactly exactly like where's fucking chrono trigger right or like some of the ones like parasite eve or vagrant story some of the games that really need it right but that have like a really cool vibe and and it it, it reminds me and again i'm not i'm not trying to put down star ocean because like it is a cool fucking game like um it's just why is this the one that's chosen to be kind of like the really pretty high effort one when games like and it's already had a remake that's the weird part right it's like when they decided to remake tactics over again recently when they already did that on psp it's like dude now's the time to do final fantasy tactics not tactics ogre again what are you doing you know, and, and I sort of get that vibe from this as well, because this did get like a full remake on the PSP. And maybe this is like a weirdly popular, like in Japan situation, kind of like Tactics Ogre is. Um, but with that said, like, this is a cool remake. Like this is a, it's a cool JRPG. And this is a, like a cool high effort remake. You know, it's fully voice acted. It's got like this really cool, like new, you know, character art, um, you know, like obviously like they did a lot lot to the visuals especially like the world map and stuff and and there's even like new like battle mechanics and systems and stuff like this is a high effort remake 
with that said, um, and it feels good. Like the combat feels good. This is an action RPG. If you're not kind of familiar with the history of like of like these Japanese action RPGs, if you watch this and you're like, well, this kind of reminds me a lot of like a classic Tales of game. Um, that's because they sort of famously split. Like the like a Wolf Team famously split from like the Star Ocean Team. Basically, the Tales people and the Star Ocean people used to be the same people. They split and they said, fuck you, we're going to make it ourselves. And that's why Tales and like Star Ocean has always been very like similar in terms of like the style of combat, especially early on. Gotcha. Um, Star Ocean kind of hasn't really kept up, I'd say, in terms of quality to like Tales or even like the amount of games. But this one is a cool game. The reason I want to bring it up on the podcast is because I did sort of want to talk about like why is Square Enix not doing it for like the more obvious games, right? Because right. I think this game's going to do fine. And, you know, I think it's going to be good. And I think people are going to be happy to play it. But, you know, in the back of their mind, they are wondering, like, why can't Chrono Trigger look like this? Why, wh not just why is this not Chrono Trigger, but how come when Chrono Trigger does come out, it's like a really fucked port that, like, fans got to, like, salvage from being, like, complete shit. Or even, like, the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters. Like, right. you know, fans are begging them to, like, put in a new font because it's, like, the tragically bad font they used in, like, the mobile version or some shit. Right. Yeah. It's like, why? No, it, I don't. It doesn't make sense. We, I mean, we know Square Enix likes money. It's and it, it feels like Chrono, like Chrono Trigger oh, and Final saying. Fantasy VI would be like just money, just print money. Like that's yeah. Like the people would would trip over themselves to to pay money for those 2D HD rem, uh, remakes uh, of, of it, those games. It's insane. Like, like this would be like this would we we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Like we would be be just happily happily taking, you know, these kinds of remakes if those other remakes have been done. Like those just seem like the obvious choices. It's so strange. I, I, to me. I think there's probably a lot of like politics involved with some of the those game choices at like Square Enix, right? Especially like from the higher ups that were maybe involved in some of those projects over the years, right? Where or or even the fact that like some games might be too legendary to get only like they're untouchable like, <laughs> so to speak. like, like what, what i'm saying is like maybe they don't want to do this with chrono trigger because they think chrono trigger deserves what's happening with like final fantasy 7 right now and mm. this isn't good enough you know what i mean um and maybe that's why they're kind of like picking like the b tier jrpgs now when when they did like uh, live alive like that was cool because that game never came to the west right so even though it was like a like a pretty obscure japanese rpg from squaresoft like it it made sense to me at the time because it's like well this never came out over here that's just kind of cool here again second time it was remade um so yeah I, I don't know um it's the, it's the demo itself is cool i will say i will say uh the voice acting is pretty bad like mm. it's, not, it's not good it's not good it's fully voiced is it better like, than not having voice acting at all no um like, well there was to not have voice acting there as a was bad voice acting in the original at least in like combat and stuff it, it was like it was pretty bad then right you know like a tells game there's lots of people shouting their moves right with like bad voices um especially star ocean back then and like this is re-recorded and i don't know if it was from like the psp remake or what because there's two japanese language tracks and one english language track um but it it feels really for everything else that seems really high effort it's a shame that like the voice acting is not better but it is you know fully voice acted now or you know at least the story sequences so I don't know. It's the kind of thing where that's going to really kind of rub people the wrong way. But like, it is so impressive that this is being treated with such a nice remake because it is a cool game. It's just, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. It's not the one I wanted it's, or you wanted or Crispy wanted or Chris Davis wanted. It's some people just wanted as, this. Just its existence is like shining a light on what's missing, which is. Yeah. Two obvious choices, Final Fantasy VI and Chrono Trigger. Like, and way more than that. You know, like, why has Final Fantasy Tactics not had its, like... Oh, but also, th that remake is apparently coming, right? Like, like well, who knows? that was part of... But, but, but that, that was on the video. Video. What video level of remake? Who knows what level of remake it's going to be? Because is it going to be this pretty? Or is it going to be more of, like, a 
tactics ogre situation where they maintain the original art. I think um, I'm, I, oh, well, that's a good point. I mean, here's the thing: like you, you briefly mentioned the Final Fantasy VII remake, and like, I don't, you know, I think I'm more interested in these, like, especially when it comes to like treating like these older classic games. I, I think I'm way more interested in seeing these style of remakes. Or, like, I don't like. I, I wouldn't want Final Fantasy VI to get like a Final Fantasy VII remake treatment. I, I would. I, sure. I, I would personally much rather see something more similar to this. But you say um, that, Nick. But but here's the thing: if you were to pick this up and start playing, you'd be like, "Well, this is pretty, but this is also still a PlayStation One RPG that's paced like a PlayStation One RPG, and it's not like a Chain Echoes. It's not like a Sea of Stars. It's a PlayStation One RPG that looks really pretty sure. and plays a lot nicer. And there's new systems and stuff, but it is still like, wow, this right story sequence is going on like really long you know i gotta like you know talk to everybody in town you know it, it's it's an old jrpg from that era and you know it, it makes me wonder like how is this thing gonna be well re- is this thing gonna be well received because the original game was like pretty well received it didn't get final fantasy 7 scores but it got like these like good decent scores you know this is like an 80 right and then it got remade on the PSP and it was like an 80, right? Now, doesn't Probably 80, be an 80 when it again. gets But but doesn't 80 when it becomes lovingly remade kind of rise above that, right? Because I mm. I should this be rewarded for like the effort they put into it because most remakes from them have not had this kind of like work put into it, right? So, That's a I don't question. know, we'll see. Only time um, will tell. This is actually coming out next month, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. So we'll find out soon. But uh, give me just a second. I'm trying to fix the, the screens here. I don't know what so happened. I'll fix your uh, So you're saying I should not transition to the next game yet? We should buy uh, time. Should, Maybe should, it shouldn't be a sandwich, Nick. Shut up, Brad. Maybe We're it doing should the be bread, bread. It should meat. be an open, an open face sandwich. Maybe yeah. we should do the bread, bread, meat. What? Yeah. yeah. Maybe this is one, two, three, four. I'm, okay, we, we can mean, try. I mean, you. He has to switch no matter what. Doesn't matter which game's next. El okay. Paso, we, elsewhere. Tr- uh, okay. Well, I can. I can. We can do a test. I can try a test of the creed now. All right. Okay. Try it. Let's let's just see thing. what happens. I. <laughs> uh, we're doing it live, uh, as we always do. Uh, we are professionals, and uh, yeah, there we go. We got Assassin's Creed Mirage footage playing so right Mecca now. And, Mecca and Chat did confirm that it is. The English track from the PSP version, which makes sense why it seems so dated when that stuff has been really good lately. Yeah. Um, so yeah. All right. Anyways, let's do it. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Claude Mirage for a second. Uh, first of all, I just really want to start by saying I you kind of caught me off guard, Chris Davis, because last week you said you sounded like you had no interest in playing this anytime soon, or you weren't going to prioritize it, and then all of a sudden you're farther in this game than I am. Uh, what's going well, on there? Guys play games quicker than you. <laughs> that is true. That I mean, is, I, I do true. do that because I focus on one game at a time, pretty much. Uh, I I don't know. I just it was out and it was available. And when you made the offer to trade it for, it was just there. <laughs> it's I like just, I played it because it was just there. I was like, you know what? Like, I did want to play this, and, but I, I don't want to let you borrow my copy. And then you went out and bought it. Yes, but here's the thing: is that I'm building a new computer. And when that is built, like, I just want to focus on that and just, like, messing around with that. Mm, and so I, build, I, I needed build. something to play for the next week and a half. And okay. this was available. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Let's talk about Assassin's Creed Mirage for a second. First of all, I do want to say... What does that feel like? What does that feel like? Like, I have what? no video games to play. Maybe I should go to the store and buy a video game. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Like, <laughs> that is a pretty unusual feeling. Um... So last week we kind of we we ended up unexpectedly getting into kind of a tangent about Assassin's Creed and kind of like what it represents in modern game development and like kind of how these games are made. All kind of came that conversation kind of came from the fact that Assassin's Creed Mirage dropped last week. But at that, at that time, none of us had played it, so we didn't really know what to expect. Um, well, actually, kind of knew what to expect because it is an Assassin's Creed game, right? Um, we, I it, we're, we knew to expect what they said this was, which is an well, Assassin's Creed that was in the mold of the old style. Yes. Yeah, so there was a bit of a question mark for me anyways, because on one hand, they have touted this kind of from the very beginning. It's kind of like it's actually literally like a marketable bullet point is that this is like a 
smaller scale Assassin's Creed that is wait much that is akin to what what was the what a minute? I see a bird. That doesn't feel very it, old it, Assassin's Creed. Listen, listen, that's, listen. That's listen, modern listen. Assassin's Creed. That's what I'm getting. That's what that's what I'm trying to get to. Cart before the horse, man. So they allude to the fact that this is a smaller, more traditional, quote unquote, Assassin's Creed experience. Not to mention kind of the setting makes it feel very akin to like the original Assassin's Creed. Um, this is not one of those RPGs. So you're not spending a, you're not constantly running into like Crispy had alluded to last week. You're not constantly running into an issue with like enemies being way stronger than you and not being able to actually like assassinate them so that's kind of nice and it kind of like leans more into like the experiment like back when the series felt a little bit more experiment experimental in terms of oh, they I, they I, do a lot of trying to nod at the original assassin's creed and and two specifically as well i i, um, I think the word i'm looking for is the, the game word? feels a bit more reactive uh, like when it comes to you trying to like assassinate people like when you actually get to like the big set piece missions where it's like you're trying to assassinate a very specific target that moves the story forward they're usually like much bigger locations and suddenly it feels a little bit more don't crucify me for this but like it feels a little bit more hitmany right like it's like you can you have all these various like ways you can enter the the complex and you can like you have all these tools at your disposal and really the goal is to like try and figure out how to get to your target and then you can take them out and in, know, in, in that regard, like I so the original Assassin's Creed, the idea of the narrative was that you had to figure learn about your targets. So you went on these little right. side objectives like they were like maybe pickpocketing or listening to guards, things like that. And that gave right. you like the foundation for figuring out who your target is. You know, and this you know the, that uh, is actually a, a main objective of the game. It's no longer right. just like a, a, a choose your own kind of like side thing. It's narrative. And I like so. That. so no, I do too. So, but here's here's what here's what I do want to say because Brad, the first thing you you said was, "I see an eagle." This doesn't feel like very, you know. It's, this, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure, trying to organize my thoughts here. In a lot of ways, this game feels like every other Assassin's Creed game I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> Great, uh, you know, and I and obviously I think a lot of people are expecting that, right? What I yeah. I, I do like the return, kind of the return to the more experimental nature of the story. And I'm honestly, I'm like a sucker for kind of like we we all know I'm kind of a sucker for like the historical fiction, science fiction angle here. So I'm, I'm kind of hooked on that stuff. But like what I wasn't really expecting, and maybe this is one, it's been, I don't, it's been like three years since I played Valhalla, which was the last Assassin's Creed game that I played. And even lo obviously even longer since I played the last non RPG Assassin's Creed game. So it's been, it, it, it's been a while. I kind of would, and this is probably intrinsically tied to the fact that this is, this is, this from the beginning has been kind of pitches like this side game, right? It's like a $50. It's not the full price game. Uh, it, I would have expected this game to feel a lot smoother because it's been like, get, game development just progresses over time, right? Like things shouldn't feel over time. Things shouldn't feel as like, like stiff and forced and kind of like, this is, this is right back to feeling, you know how Assassin's Creed used to feel like really sticky. Like mm -hmm. you'd like stick to everything. Oh, and, and it I still think is very getting, sticky. You were getting, they were slowly getting back to where I, where I think everything flowed better and you didn't quite notice the stickiness as much. This feels like we've taken like two or three steps backwards in terms of how sticky you you feel and how kind of like forced the like free running feels, which is kind of a shame. Um, but then I think to myself, well, what 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 really was I expecting? This is like a fifty dollar. This is this almost feels like this game was made to kind of like fill the gap between Valhalla and uh, what's the, what's the the feudal Japan that's coming out next year or whatever. Red. Um, uh, red. Yeah. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, it kind of feels like a step backwards. Yeah, but like it, it it really does like the momentum, like it's not where it probably should be. Uh, the the combat, it feels a lot like the brotherhood in a lot of ways. Like, the combat feels like step backwards, too. Like th 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 what I will say is over time, even if I even if you don't like love kind of like the RPG Assassin's Creed games, or whatever, like they were eventually getting to the point where like 
parrying and like getting involved in combat scenarios felt really, really good. Yeah, and really I don't good rhythm. Quite, it this doesn't this feels super simplified and a little rough around the edges, and that's kind of a shame. Um, like it used to be. Like it used to be. Uh, yeah. I, I was kind of I was just kind of hoping when they were talking about this feeling like a throwback to original Assassin's Creed, it was going to feel like, okay, they've modernized the original Assassin's Creed. So it's like, take a lot of what you liked about the old games, but it's going to feel smoother. It's going to, it's going to look better. It's going to feel better to control. I was kind of expecting all that stuff or hoping for that stuff. And I don't think that's yeah, but the when's, case here. When's the last time you've come back to play like Assassin's Creed one, because I'm sure this feels way well, no, more. I mean, obviously it's been, that. it's been a long time since I played Assassin's Creed one, but like, before what was the last game that came out before Origins? Was it Black Flag? It was well, I guess it was what? technically Syndicate. I'm trying to think of the last like non RPG Assassin's Creed. No, it would have UNC. been Syndicate. Oh, Syndicate, Syndicate, Syndicate yeah. right? I I liked Syndicate a lot, and I think they did a lot of really cool things with Syndicate. It, and that Syndicate feels a lot different mechanically, and like it feels a lot different to control than the original Assassin's Creed. And this, to me, feels like they've taken a step back since even, like, pre that stuff. Like, it's just, it's weird. Um, but I will say they have carried over some things about the newer games that I really do love. One of which being kind of like the cult that they introduced in, the, in Odyssey is kind of back in that, like, these main targets are kind of scattered throughout the world. And you're kind of, like Chris Davis alluded to, you're like, you have to do... You have to investigate the world to find clues that will give you hints to like the identity of these members, and that's kind of what opens up the main story. Yeah, they actually uh, feels like they flesh out the villains more to make them, you know, e even their limited exposure in the game more interesting. Um, yeah. And, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, and and to that effect, like when you actually go after your primary target, um. The Fun. game feels like it grabs a little bit of inspiration from Hitman because it gives it you a location. <laughs> it, it, it tries to. So it gives yeah. you a location. The enemy, the guy's going to be somewhere in this area. There's something going on. And then there's multiple like ways you can draw him out through interacting with the crowd or completing like these little, you know, NPC objective things. Um like, I, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for you, Nick, but there was there was an instance to where I ran into uh, some NPCs that uh, basically needed uh, to get out of a contract. I found oh, the no, guy I did who did, I did who, that last night. Yeah, I found the guy who owns the deed for the contract. I stole it and that was able to trigger the the civilians to go and harass the primary target. So he came out on the balcony and I could easily assassinate him. Yeah, yeah. And you know, that stuff I don't think it's nearly as complex as or as or as organic as Hitman, but like I can see, you can see the inspiration, you can see what it's going for. That's kind of yeah. nice. That's the direction I think the series should be heading for. It's just such a weird again, this is such a bizarre fucking series because it's like you can see the inspiration, you can see the ideas they have, and it's just like moving at a snail's pace to get to make those leaps. This feels like a series that should be making like huge leaps and bounds forward with like so many of these entries but they're just like moving at a snail's pace i don't understand it it's, it's um, weird you're saying that about a game that's literally made to be a throwback uh, yeah i mean it's like you're being mad at final fantasy 9 for I'm, not moving i'm not the mad though because i am enjoying it like i'm having fun like i fully intend to, 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 to finish this game like i i'm i'm i didn't even finish valhalla like this feels like if you didn't if valhalla was too much for you if valhalla was too much in, it was leaning too hard into the RPG stuff, and that that turned you off. This this is kind of probably what you're looking for. Like it's it's a night, but then it, but then you think about the fact that Assassin's Creed Red, which is the feudal Japan one, is right back to being an RPG. Like it's just such a yeah. But but this is this was originally meant to be an, an expansion, expansion to Valhalla, to Valhalla. and which they is just even stranger because Valhalla is an RPG ass RPG. Like it's like it's like the most egregious example of like the RPG-ness of, Ass of Assassin's Creed. It is, it, 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 you know, it's where everything, if you're not strong enough, if you're like not high enough level, you're going to have a real struggle like in doing just about anything. Like it's, it's, it's almost linear in that regard. Like it forces you down a path because you have to be of a certain level in a lot of ways to like do yeah. certain things in that game. And um, there, there's a little bit of leveling in this, by the way. 
is i mean i you mean you're talking about like upgrading your tools and stuff well there, no there, there are there are the there is the small set of skill trees but i'm talking about like narratively you are watching basim uh rise to the ranks of the the creed mm. so you start out the game as an initiate and as you progress you know, with your actions, yeah. you are becoming an apprentice and higher and higher and higher. Yeah, I still don't really know what exactly I have reached a new level like today, actually earlier today. And I was like, I don't really know what this means for me in the grand scheme of things. It was a lot more obvious in like the RPGs, because as like, you know, like when you level up, you know what that equates to. I don't really know what that equates to here. Um, I but I, know- I want to believe. So, again, I think this game takes a lot of inspiration from Brotherhood. I mm. want to, uh, it, with the comet specifically, with the parrying and how you do the instant kills and how it That's feels, so it's yeah. it's weird. But like, I feel like there is like this drive to kind of build up the the assassin order, uh, and I, I feel like you're going to have NPC companions because I just did a, a side quest where I helped out an NPC uh, uh, companion who is an assassin. So oh, I, okay. I feel I haven't like done it that flushes yet, out. So. I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's just it's just such a weird the series has such a weird trajectory because it's like just when you think they should be moving forward, they're like, why don't we like, you know, take inspiration from like a game that came out over a decade ago. <laughs> and, and I also want to mention one of the specific st- strong strongest running rumors with this game is that it's supposed to have eventually a paid expansion slash remake oh. of the original Assassin's Creed in here. So if it has to follow those gameplay rules, like mm-hmm. it works. But how for bad this. do we do? Do we really want that? Okay, well that's, just, I that's do. a whole other question. I mean, sure. If I'll, you know, that's can you imagine the original Assassin's Creed built within these gameplay rules? I mean, that's like, kind of what this feels like. That's kind of what this. Feels, there's no, even a. Nice. There is literally even a filter you can turn on in this game to make the whole game have that like blue tint to it to make it yeah. look like Ugh. Assassin's Creed one. <laughs> I mean, if that's a thing you're into, you can do that's that. Gross. <laughs> it was, a, it was a thing. Yeah. But like, it feels a little gross, know. but, but Hey, but Hey, like they're going to maybe into, do that and charge for it. When you got Pikmin four over here, doing it for free as a bonus uh, mode. <laughs> it's true. Uh, they, they um, yeah, but Nintendo gets you through the, the, the Amiibos. That's how they get you. Hey, look, uh, well, this game yeah. does some of the things that I love about Assassin's Creed, like uh, like the interesting side quests are the things that are like where you're hunting down these like artifacts that are linked to like the future shit and you're like finding stuff in the world. It's uh, there's pickpocketing in this game, which is actually kind of cool because the main yeah. character is a thief. So like the pick like act pickpocketing successfully actually requires a little bit of skill and timing and stuff, which is interesting. But like some of the shards are just being carried around the world by people. So you have to like, track them down and then successfully pickpocket them to get it. And, and also, you can organically thing, get those things early before you're actually supposed to. Like yeah, I, yeah, I but, ran, I pickpocked one dude and I got my first shard. I was like, what the hell is this? Before it even mentions it in the story. Yeah. And yeah. that's cool. Like honestly, my favorite thing about this game that I think feels like the biggest step forward maybe is the, um, the notoriety system. Uh, like as you do things, you commit crimes, people notice you, your notoriety builds up, obviously, and you can like you can, which is a, which is that red bar in the bottom right hand corner, right? And as it grows goes up, like you could be running through the streets. If your notoriety is, think of it like stars and Grand Theft Auto, right? But not quite as extreme. So like you're running through the streets, you have full notoriety. You may draw people's attention, but if somebody, if you draw like bump into someone, they might be like, "Hey, is that the person? Isn't that you know the guy that's stealing shit?" Or like depending on what's going on, they might say something else. And then, like, they might call the guards over, and then that triggers a chase. Um, yes. But as you go through the city, you can, like, you can, like, bribe people. You can pull stuff. You can pull, like, wanted posters off the wall to lower your notoriety. But, like, as your notoriety builds up, just coming into contact with a guard doesn't automatically guarantee they're going to recognize you and, like, chase you. It feels more organic. That's, like, the one thing in this game that I think feels way more organic. I could have full notoriety and be standing in front of a guard, and it still may be, like, 30 seconds or so before they rec- they realize, hey, isn't that the guy? And then the, and they yeah. start chasing me. It just feels more natural. Um, but that's maybe, like, the biggest leap forward for the series, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh... I don't know. I don't know what else to say about this. It's 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 interesting, well, and if no. if you like that kind of like old Assassin's Creed flavor, this <laughs> certainly has it. And I'm this, 
This has okay. been a pleasant conversation about Assassin's Creed, which let me tell you, Nick, can't leave an Assassin's Creed conversation without you talking about how you're a little poopy pants boy because you like Assassin's Creed. Right? Oh, this God is damn all, it. all our Assassin's Creed conversations, but you're, I have to be, you're a poopy boy and you like poop and you're <coughs> pooping right now. Can I also Thanks, think, oh. say, I think it's pretty cool that this game uh, has a full. Uh, voice track for classical Arabic. Like, that's true. Yeah, that's that cool. is, that's a level of immersion. That I, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It is Nick, good. You, it is, it is good. I, you know, this, the fucking voice acting for like, uh, NPCs that you like, like shop, like vendors and stuff. is terrible. Yeah. I, Nick, Nick, my point is, that you I preface that all of these Assassin's Creed conversations going like, Oh my God, it's going to be a disaster. And then they're always like this. I was like, it's fine. You're right, Brad. Assassin's Maybe Creed you're right. <laughs> Like I said, I have, I ha- just, I just have my own insecurities because no one hates you. <laughs> you have Assassin's people. Creed conversation PTSD, basically. Yes, no, yes. And I don't remember. Been fine. It's always been fine. He has, he has anxiety, not PTSD. Yeah. yeah, I do have. I do. I probably have a little bit of anxiety, and you know, it's one of the. It, this is there one are of some those franchises games. and games we talk about on the podcast where I get it. It's there. I don't think it's, it's I don't you don't think, think it's, it's Assassin's Creed? Creed. I don't think it's I don't know. It's, Creed. Here's like here's the thing. Sometimes I play not all of the time, but sometimes I play an Assassin's Creed game and I genuinely am like, I want to talk to people about this. Like I'm I'm enjoying this. I want to talk to people about it. But even in our own in, I'm gonna be honest, in our own community, some like there's some hostility towards this this series in general. And it's impossible to like I feel like it's impossible to broach the conversation. It's probably easiest to talk about it on the podcast which is you know hmm. it's but like trying to like go into the like gaming series. channel and discord i know it's a popular series but like going into discord and being like hey i want to talk about assassin's creed people are like get him <laughs> sometimes that's what it feels like i mean um, to me like it, it, it was a double-edged sword with the the new generation of assassin's creed like when origins came out hey they're finally doing egypt they're doing a an rpg system it's open world that's yeah, interesting that's cool. okay then they do, uh, they do uh, the, the Greek one, uh, Odyssey, Odyssey, and so you you get the female protagonist who's really good, and you the get the female explore... protagonist that only sixteen percent of the people actually chose, which still is that blows is that my... a true number? Is that it's, a real? I mean, number? I don't remember if that's the exact stat, but it is that's shockingly. Really I wouldn't low. be surprised. It is and like seventy really something good. percent, eighty percent people chose the male character in that in that game, and yeah. that is atrocious. They should have. Oh my god! I can't. That makes me so mad. You never but, played it as as the boy, Nick. You don't know. I, but you meet that the character. Boy. You meet that character in the game. If you it, you meet the Was other he character, not cool? Was he not he's good? an ass. He's just a complete asshole. Just like well, you totally know what? unlikable. Boys are assholes. He is completely unlikable. Cassandra is one of the not not only the, one of the best characters in all of Assassin's Creed, literally like a standout character of the generation of gaming. Like she is an incredible character. Oh, and I mean, she that, was pretty good. I, let's not get crazy. Hey man, in, in, I'm in just an making... effort to wrap this up because <laughs> Assassin's Creed conversation can go on and on. Are you? I mean, is this this just? Are you all happy with this just being a little one off diversion? Do you want them to go back to being bad Witcher games? What's the what's up? I'm, uh, I'm happy with the diversion. I would hope that this would signal like a an, an upcoming like new well, formula. Here's the thing. Here's the that thing. We might know be somewhere in between. No, 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 no. We know both of the next mainline entries in the series are Red and Hex. Red being another RPG kind of like Origins and Odyssey and Valhalla, and yeah. Hex they have pretty much said is not an RPG. So it's 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 supposed to be something more akin, yeah. maybe. To and, this. And, but it's that's being the one that's like. By, say, that's the one that's like Salem Witch Trial shit, which sounds kind of Ooh. awesome. So I, I also imagine like that's probably going to be. Oh, it's not. It's not Salem Witch Trials. No, 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 it's, it's like not Salem Witch Trials, but it's it's like, but it has to do with witches. Ger- like, Germanic witches. Witch yeah. Germanic witches. Yeah. So. And and it's I mean, it's, it's being the creative director for that is Clint Hawking. So like they're they're putting big guns on this. I mean, I am most excited for Hex because I think that has the most potential to like really mix the series up again. Um, but like I love like. As far as I'm concerned, two out of three, as far as the RPGs, Origins is still one of my favorite games in the series, and Odyssey was excellent uh, in its own right. So, like, you know, Valhalla, I didn't even finish, but I think that was just because it's st- like they need a they they need they need to just pull it, rein it back in scope wise. They need to tighten like the, the right belt because it was too much bo- too much blow. This, this, this game, this is, 
tightening of the belt. This is this, this for y'all. No, I'm saying like if they keep the RPG systems, I think that would be fine as long as they can kind of f- figure out a way to address like what Crispy was talking about with like the 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 the, the running into the leveling, leveling issue. If they can address that and keep the systems, that'd be fine. But if Do they, if they, when they should use was this. supposed to be a shorter Assassin's Creed game after Odyssey. It is the biggest Assassin's Creed game ever made, hands down. But like, when, it is, when it was announced and early on, they talked about it being like, "Don't yeah, worry, a more don't worry, we're, we're not going to do that again." And they totally right. did. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. They can't. Um, you know what? Help you know what? The short one without that's not a big, huge RPG with a million side quests got a seventy-seven. Okay, so. The, but, probably... but here's the thing i do i do think i do think and i said this last week and this is just me making this is how i feel about it i feel like the general hostility towards this franchise because Emperor. rightfully so like it it is it is earned that hostility in a lot of ways mm-hmm. kind of Emperor. makes it really really hard to even to break back into those higher score ranges you know what i mean like I don't think this don't is gonna. This series is gonna like even if this was like the best traditional Assassin's Creed game ever made, I still feel like it would be like an eighty at best. You know, what I mean? because people are just like, it's good, but it's Assassin's Creed. This series Content is has re- to bloat is mix rewarding. it up again. The series has to mix it up again, and I, I'm hoping. I don't have a lot of hope for the for Red being that game, but I think Hex could be the one that we should be focusing on as like or looking to as like. This is their chance to reinvent the series again. They did well, it with Origin. Yeah. 83 on Open Critic. Yeah, but at the yeah, same time, and, and Nick, I, we we have to hope that Red actually turns out pretty well. No, I, I mean, it's Feudal Japan. I'm excited for it. I just don't think it's going to, like, change the way people think about Assassin's Creed. Or, or it's going to, like, I don't think it's going to revolutionize the series. I mean, yeah, but you, but at the same time, like it's fucking ninjas. Like they're doing, they're doing the two protagonist thing again, and people are gonna pick the wrong one again. The wrong one. The ro- or there is how a about right this? Wrong make gonna... make two protagonists that are both good. That's a good idea. I like or that maybe idea. Maybe Somebody have one of them be a samurai and the lady oh, be a Koichi, up. and then they can up. fight fucking demons with ogre powers, and then we've got Onimusha again, baby. It's back. Mm. Nope, that's, that's, that took a hard left. Why do I feel okay. so gross every time Chris talks about Onimusha? Because you have no mm-hmm. taste. I'm sorry. Because it, because it is gross. Okay. Brad, Whoa. the time has come. The, ti- the time has come, Brad. What? For you to and tell so me has Brad. how bad I should feel about the fact that I've never played all the way through the original Max Payne, and I should hate myself. Uh, and um, El Paso, well, and I tell mean, us about as, El Paso as like elsewhere. a diehard Remedy fan, it is a little weird, but that's not what we're here to do, Nick. Okay. We're not here to shame you for not playing Max Payne one and two. Given that you're a I'm diehard, I'm waiting for that. Re- Remedy I'm waiting for that remake, baby. Waiting I mean, for that they, they came out in like this. They're just mm. hard to control by today's standards. Like I played like three or four hours of Max Payne one a, a year or two ago. Um, at this point, probably two years three or ago. Four. Yeah, I, I was living in this house when I played it. <laughs> I can tell you that. I bet it was um, like ninety minutes. But whatever, that's fine. Um, okay. Well, scratch that. Who cares? It was a painful. Uh, have you heard minutes, of classic okay. Max Payne? Some indie dev yeah. kind of made a classic Max Payne e looking game. Not just looking, but um, very. It's got Max Payne vibes right yep. i mean all the fuck over it's it. a dude he pops a lot of pills he does a lot of like whispery monologuing, yeah. and he dives and there's slow-mo and he shoots guns but at demons right at demons at vampires and werewolves and demons and and this is el paso elsewhere and it is in the mold of max Payne. But it is very much, while it is not as like competently made of a like action shooter as like Max Payne was, I guess necessarily, even though it is old and poopy according to Nick. It, it's this is this is like structurally very different than Max Payne, um, even though it's it's very big Max Payne energy. This is broken up into very short levels. There's a lot of them. And mm. they are quick and they're trippy. And we're I'm looking at ads on Twitch, but right now we're probably watching a cutscene, which is yes. good because that shit is fucking good in this game. 
Um, so I was interested in this game, but you know, like y'all, I played that demo and it was just a bunch of shooting and diving. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. But then I started watching some trailers and I started people talk. I saw when reviews hit, I saw people talking about like, yeah, the action is whatever. It's repetitive. But look, this the game's vibes. got a really cool story story with really well made cutscenes, really well written, well acted, well shot. Like it is fucking compelling. And it is great for the spooky season. Sorry, Crispy. You're oh. it is very vampire-y and stuff. But it's just, oh my God. I mean, the setup of this game is, you know, it's a dude who's addicted to painkillers and he's on a one-way trip to stop his ex who happens to be the Lord of the Vampires. And she's in a uh, in a motel somewhere in El Paso, Texas, and she's uh, about to do a ritual that's going to destroy the whole world. And, you know, he's got to stop her. He's also his ex. And it's like, this shit is fucking good. Go watch a trailer to get the vibes because it is that and it is a lot of that. And it is fucking. You, you mentioned oh. that this game is like maybe a little too long. Like how long? Are okay, we shut the fuck here? up for a second, Nick. We're not there yet, you motherfucker. And I was gonna say, don't, like, don't if... talk yourself into not try playing this game before I've even told you about all the good shit. If the intro cinematic does not kind of like sell you on like the tone that's of the true. game, like nothing will. But, that, that's, but that's watch, the cinematic watch they the, the intro, demo, right? Watch the. Uh no, I don't know. I don't know. He's in a desert. He's in the desert, and his car him. gets shot up or something, and then he walks to a hotel. I don't. I don't know. know. Maybe watch the intro cinematic. Um, if you not vibe the game, but it's. I mean, here's. It, a, oh, this is on your. This is in your really, Steam library, isn't it? Yeah. So I can. Yeah, I can play it. Um, I can play it. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. If you have access to my games, I recommend you. Play I'm still it. planning on doing like a Halloween um, stream where I play a bunch of stuff, and this might be. Um. So, so something. here's the thing. I've been playing this on my Steam Deck. Uh, when I first booted this up, I was playing like mouse and keyboard. This is a very like shootery shooter shoot game, and I was like, oh, well, I need a mouse. But it's a lot of like rolling and activating slow mo and swapping weapons and stuff, and and I was kind of like struggling with the controls because I, I don't know, they were trying to be a lot like how Max Payne was back in the day. Um, but then I moved over to steam deck cause that, that's actually where I play most of my PC games. So I'm playing with controls and I was a little worried at first, but it actually works pretty well. There's like enough, like kind of like aim assist and stuff that it feels pretty good, uh, with a controller. So I've been playing it like that and it does feel good. Um, and the shooting feels good. I, and I'll, I'll, while it has like this Max Payne dive, that is very Max Payne. Like this is not, it's not really made like Max Payne. Like Max Payne is dude shooting at you constantly. So you're diving through the air constantly to avoid gunfire while you're shooting. But here it's not like that. It's like werewolves and stuff running at you, lunging at you. So you're don't even really diving is dangerous. The diving feels you unnecessary. Die, die pretty quickly. It feels kind of unnecessary. It's fun to do. And it does, I feel like I'm going to get to that point where I'm just kind of making it stylish because, um, because it is a pretty simple game. Um, but just kind of activating slow-mo and like lining up your shots, you know, but with movement, cause it's old school, right. um, that, that, that feels just, I mean, feels just as good, if not more effective. So I, I've been playing it almost as like, kind of just like a fast paced, like shooting gallery game. And it feels good. The, the thing about this game is it's got these like kind of like bite-sized levels and there's a lot of them. And, it's frustrating because I know this game is 50 like missions and I'm like Shit. on mission 25. So I'm like halfway through the game, but like the missions are like five, 10 minutes. Right. You yeah. know, like I heard someone compare this to like, don't think about max Payne. Think of, think of these as like hotline Miami levels. And once I started mm. to like accept it as like, Oh, these are just like, like, quick run throughs and then back to like the cool, like transitions or the cool story stuff or like the, the cool new twist on this level where they're doing like really trippy shit. Like if you, you know, I, I've heard a lot of people mention stuff like, you know, ashtray maze and, and stuff from control when they mention like how trippy these levels get. Yeah. And it's true. Like, like, like they're doing like crazy, like non Euclidean stuff, like up the ass and just like weird, like fun gimmicks, but it's not like, but like the tile sets are like, repeating a lot right you know it, it's like you're it's not like you're gonna see brand new assets constantly there's 50 fucking levels right but but again think of it more as like hotline miami you don't the scenery doesn't need to change so much it's more of just like 
Did they do one of those through. like stylish cutscenes between each level, or is it more like every like I mean, five I mean, levels? They, or they, it's not just a cutscene. Like they do a lot of like cool stuff in between. Like they're playing with it. it it's not. This is not a. Uh, like it's impressive. But like the stuff that's happening in the levels, the stuff that's happening between the levels, the stuff that's kind of in like the secret little side areas that you can find, you find like little radios and stuff off to the side. And there's like a, there's like a, like a radio play that's happening, which again, it feels very remedy. Right. And that progresses as, as you, you move there, like you're, 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 you're running into like little, uh, uh, like projector screens that, that will, that you know, once that starts playing, you start hearing like conversations between you and Dracula, Dracula, which is your, um, your ex who's, uh, happens to be the Lord of vampires. Um, and like, it's got good vibes. And sometimes, you know, like just a rap song starts happening and like, you're like, wait, I think this is actually just the protagonist. And it is, it's the protagonist who's the artist and like the music's really good, but then sometimes they'll like start singing along with it. It's like, this is kind of a wild game. And like, if you get, if you get like really hung up on like, Oh, there's so many levels. There's, there's, there's not too many enemy types, you know, there's only so many guns, you know, I've seen this tile set before then, then you're going to have a bad time. This is, this is not a game to poop sock. I've been playing a few levels a day and that is perfect. And honestly, I'd say given the repetitive nature of it and like the type of game that it is actually, um, I think that's probably the best way to handle it. If you try to like yeah. binge this game, you're going to have, it's going to be miserable it's, it, because it's not, it's not equipped for that. And, and, you know, this is not going to be like the best shooter of the year. It's not even going to be the best game of the year, but like the stuff that it's good at is so good. And it is like a compelling driving force for me wanting to get through each of these levels. And sometimes you'll come through a level that is just like, Oh, that was actually really cool. Like that, that was, that was a really cool twist. And maybe the three levels I played before that were kind of samey and weren't doing like enough new stuff. But that last one I right. did was really cool and had some really cool, like, like there had a, like a really cool moment in it. And I like that the game, it kind of resets shit. the meter a little bit on like, like if you, when you're starting to feel kind of yeah. like, yes, uh, yes, and then it's yes, like, yes. It kind of just but again, resets only do a, only do a few levels a day, because again, this is like a seven hour game of like kind of doing the same shit over and over again. So think about that. Like you, you uh, would play, play like half an hour a day and you know, this could be, this is a great October game. Yeah. Um, hey, real quick. And, is, 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 is this is kind of a random question, but is there a way to play games from someone else's steam library on your steam deck because like when i yeah. look at my library yeah. it only it only no, shows no, my no. games you're right uh you so i noticed that too if i'm logged on if steam is open on my pc it just works i, I mean i'm still playing on my steam deck i'm not streaming it i'm playing the games installed on my steam deck but it's not detecting the library until i turn on my pc and i think it's because my PC is what has access to your library. And then oh. all of a sudden it just sort of syncs up and my steam deck just works, but it's but, magic. It's just magic. <laughs> so, so yeah, if you're, if you can install it to your steam deck because you have access to my library, but, right? but if, if you, you turn it on and you don't see it, it's just turn on your PC and it should work. That's what I'm, I'm going to do. So I'm going to do a spooky stream. Maybe this weekend, maybe the next, I'm not entirely sure. Play with the controller uh, because, because you're not, you're not, you're 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 not you don't have a history with like these classic max paint controls with mouse and keyboard right i can't um, remember what i tried what i played with i think i played with controller during the demo but i don't know That's because movement is is just as important as like the aiming which means you know if you're not like a fucking tap dancing with WASD, like it's not worth it play with the control that's definitely not me that's definitely um, not me <laughs> and you and use your slow-mo like standing and it, it yeah. feels good it does feel good like headshots feel good it feels good but I, i'm telling you like like watch that intro cutscene again. If it, if it doesn't click with you, that's fine. But like, it's just, I, I like it. It's a lot of good, like fourth wall breaking stuff. And, you know, you know, I kind of remind, he, he's, very, he's very aware because, you know, he's obviously not in, uh, he, he's kind of descending into the void and he's going like taking an elevator down from floor to floor to floor. And like, yeah. it's such a good, like they're just nailing all you know, vibe stuff. wise, and obviously this has no, this is no 
reflection on like the way the game actually controls or anything but like it's the vibe wise it's kind of giving me like shadow man vibes a little bit <laughs> I'm not uh, sure. That's... Maybe racist, but we'll 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 keep Is moving. I, I will say <laughs> What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What? <laughs> Just, they're, they're both black protagonists. I don't know why you Oh well that I didn't it's not go Shadow there. Man. Jesus. <laughs> That's why I, I was talking about the color palette and like just the way like like I don't know. Here's the, the crazy thing. I think like not, not only is this one of the like I think one of the most compelling like narratives of the year. Again, the way these scenes are shot is like fucking cool. They do stuff that like reminds me of like Thirty Flights of Loving Crispy. Like mm. it's good. it's fucking good. <laughs> it's good. It was a good one. You, you just press the crispy so, button. So so. I love thirty five. All right, I'm sold. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it an honest, honest to God try. Have, uh, have a spooky just, stream. Just put on your headphones and kind of soak in the 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 mood because it, it is very. The thing I hate most about it is the art that you put on our fucking background because that is like not representative of, of what I feel like this this game's energy is, and it sucks wait, because that's wait, the whoa, thing whoa, whoa. on the loading screen. On the background, the, the, the fucking art that you put on on the overlay or whatever. The overlay like has the Assassin's Creed on it. The, the, the oh, thumbnail. on the thumbnail. Whatever. The fucking gotcha, the dude it. shooting. The color. It's, not, what the it's thing? not the energy of like this is a very like sad story. There's not much. You know? There's it's, not much official art for this game. Is the problem. But I, I guess Max Payne was kind of like that too, right? Like like Max Payne was like a sadder like. Well, Max Payne 2. Well, whatever. It, anyways, yeah, this dude's on a one-way trip. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> um, it's, I'm into it's it. It's good. I, I, I like it a lot. It, and, and there are times where I'm like, this game, like, why is this game made this way? But like, then, like you said, I'm back on board. I recommend this. I, I, I think watch that opening cutscene, And if it, it vibes with you, play this fucking game. Because it's cool. They got like really cool... I'm going to see if I can get sometimes. this running on my Steam Deck because this seems like a perfect game to play during my or lunch breaks. Even if you don't because... want to watch that opening cutscene, watch like uh, watch like the story trailer or something. Yeah. Because that, that yeah. is the, the nugget here. And I'm not usually a, the story guy. And that's the thing that's like, I want to get to the Pulling next you through. Like, story moment. Story stuff. So, okay. yeah. Sweet. But it's also kind of fun to play. All right, mind. guys. Let's do it. Let's wrap it up. Four player minute. And Looking. this is... We took four player minute, guys. No, uh, minute? no 30 uh, minute lists. Hold Final on, thoughts. Hold on, hold Final on. thoughts for the night. Hold on. What? You can keep talking. I apologize. I just stopped my recording. I'm going <gasps> to start. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I did that. Just now. I'm going to. You don't have to. Well, oh, yeah, no. now, I have to sync, now I have to sync it up at the end. We have to do a roll call at for the, at the end. end. You don't have to say this stuff, but you can oh, take it. Oh, no. Up. You could just keep going. I'm just going to well, yeah, the record we're, button. I'm again. not stopped. This is, we're going. This is, the podcast has not stopped. You just we're fucked it up. We're off the okay. rails. We're off the rails. Have you not now started going recording again. yet? Oh, my God in heaven. Okay. <laughs> you just, oh, my God. What, you man? just added like 20 minutes to my. Hey, you know, no, uh, I did not. Scarecrow in chat asks a very relevant question. Yeah, Skin okay. deep when? What is uh, a good question? That is Skin a Deep game. is the the Blendo game, the next Blendo game. They were posting regular updates about that for a long time. Which game is that? It's the next it's uh, a Blendo game. Blendo. Game. I don't know who's Blendo, who's Blendo. I don't remember Blendo. What's Blendo? They made Thirty Flights of Loving. Quadrilateral oh, Cowboy. Oh, Quadrilateral Cowboy. Gotcha. Gravity who Bone. Gravity Bone. Yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, Flotilla okay. One and Two. Adam Zombie Smasher. Oh my god. Mm. Okay, Brad. What? Uh, I'm here. I've ever oh, heard I'm here. of it? <laughs> Take us away. What are your final thoughts for the for the night? Oh, I'm not ready. Somebody else go. Oh my god. Crispy. Final thought for the night. Man, when's skin deep gonna come out? What happened? I think I'm the final <laughs> they Crispy's, used to update. Crispy's not ready for his. What? Okay, I'm man. doing it. No, that counts. That counts. <laughs> you can't no, make ahead. me say another thing. I already said a thing. Also, uh, Armor Core 6 is fucking dope, and I know I said that last week, but I kept playing it, and it got doper. <laughs> like, they nerfed, it's a, they so nerfed cool. a bunch of weapons and parts and stuff. They did. Them. They did, but what? like they, they nerfed the Zimmermans, but they're still pretty good. They nerfed the, the 
the songbirds, and they're still all right. Fuck, uh, see? <laughs> Uh, oh, but dude, fuck the fuck the songbirds. Just switch to Didn't the. Did they nerf the wheelchair too? They did. Well, they nerfed the yeah. They nerfed its defensiveness, but it's still it still has like it's still one of the quickest frames. What in about the, game. the Gatling guns? Uh, I don't think they nerfed them. They're still highly effective. I use them a lot, but um, I mean the they are. Door? Is that is that thing still cool? I you don't know. Just, I think well, I think what happened was. Game. I think what was going on with the with I, I think there was a bug going on with like um, system recovery that had to do with with like um status effects like the ones that the uh, flamethrower imposes. So I don't and they fixed it I think. So flamethrower might just kind of suck now. By association, be better now. Um, oh, better. I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, because I think now the the status stuff is working properly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not entirely I don't, I don't sure. Like in single player games. Uh, if you really middle. like, if you really like the, the songbirds though, just switch over to the ear shots. Those are whew, beautiful. Um, and most like grenade launchers and bazookas got buffs in like, unlike the songbirds. So, yeah. uh, it's, uh, explosive players are doing really well. Also, I played a level last night. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but, uh, it's, it, it's basically makes you fucking Char Aznable from Mobile Suit Gundam, where it's like, everybody hates you, they're all trying to kill you, and you are just flying around, like, destroying capital ships, like, it is so cool. I can't begin to describe how cool it is, it's so much fun. Uh, that's it, that's all I got. Okay, I'm ready for mine, I thought all of right. something I can talk all about. Right, Brad. I, I, um... I watched all of Castlevania Requiem. Requiem? Mm. Is that what it's called? I think Requiem. so. What is it? The new, the new, this, that, that doesn't sound right. The new Castlevania series, the Somebody Richter Belmont. Sounds really good. No, Requiem, Requiem, Requiem is it? Nocturne. 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 Castlevania Nocturne uh, on Netflix. The new Thanks Castlevania persuade. series starring Richter Belmont and, uh, you know, the, her, the, that crew. Um, let me tell you, it was cool. It was cool. If you like Castlevania, I know there's some controversy on, uh, I don't know, how much Richter curses or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think they wanted him, him. I think they wanted him to kind of like stand out in his own way from uh, Trevor Belmont, I guess. Right. They want to differentiate him. So he he's mm-hmm. a little bit younger, you know, he less of a roguish. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's he's not as likable as Trevor Belmont, right? Right. He doesn't have yeah. that Han Solo thing going on. Yeah, he doesn't have the Han Solo. But I think that's good, right? Like, if it was just another Trevor Belmont, that wouldn't. Yeah, that would. Suck. I don't know. He's definitely cool. There's definitely the part where like he goes Super Saiyan, right, and gets his fucking holy magic power, right, that he uses in 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 uh, Rondo and Symphony and stuff. But like, and that was a cool moment. And like Maria. I don't know if we talked about this. Maria, no, who's that bird really throwing, know. animal throwing, you know, little girl and 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 you know, Rondo of Blood, they made her fucking cool. And she does a lot of cool stuff with her like fucking birds and shit. And mm. there's some cool moments where she summons a turtle for defense. Mm. And like you know, Turtle cool. for defense. Yeah, she uses, you know, a turtle shell for defense, but she just summons a turtle at a oh, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, so I will say, like, look, there was some, there was some talk about, like, oh, I don't like the writing in this one. Look, it wasn't that great in that first series either. Let me tell you, I don't, it, I've never it thought it was a slow series. seasons. I have never thought it was a series to watch for, like, you know, writing and stuff, and like the storytelling. Like, obvious, you know, there was never much story in Castlevania, at least none that sh- should have ever really been taken too seriously. You know, it's, I'm glad that they're like making an effort here. It's cool that they set, you know, th- this story in the middle of like the French revolution and like all the, like, <laughs> the, the French aristocrats or vampires for some reason, like it's cool, but like, just don't look too deeply. Like this is about like cool, like, action castlevania he moments like seeing richter do cool shit and maria do cool shit and like they do cool shit and and if you're here for that if you're that kind of castlevania fan that just wants to see a belmont fucking kill some vampires very coolly <laughs> um, 
I, I mean, I don't want to say anything, but I mean, you you know, Alucard's part mm-hmm. of that wider what? story. Yeah. I mean, I mean right. they're 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 building to Symphony of the Night. Did you know Alucard's Dracula spell backwards? And it is a big cliffhanger, and there is there are they are going to be renewed for the next season. Yep. So, um, and it's going to be cool. Um, be cool. So yeah, I recommend it. Um, but sorry, he sorry Richter is you know I don't know. There's accusations that he's a Marvel character, Racist. MCU character, uh-huh. or something. You you know how people are these days. You can't. They're he terrible. did a racism. If it if no no I mean like he made a joke, oh. you know, which is even worse, right? To some fans. Oh, people are done with quippiness. <laughs> like they're done with quippy. Yeah, he cursed or he made a joke. It's he's the devil. Um, so yeah, you know that sort of thing. And it's like right. woke now because they, you know. Oh man, sign me up. <laughs> Annette, which was like not even a character, is you know doesn't look the same even though she wasn't a character at all before and now she's a character with a backstory and people aren't happy with that but yeah of course yeah. all right Anyways, all right castlevania it's cool also play that Davis. castlevania dlc for for uh, dead cells dead cells dead, dead, cells? dead cells yep dead, dead cells. cells that, that that's dead really cells. good too uh chris davis it's seasonal too castlevania final cool. thoughts uh, my final thought first is me gaslighting you because I am so excited for your spooky stream for you to, in addition to playing uh, El Paso Elsewhere, you're also going to be playing uh, the world famous Squirrel Stapler. No. Um, so much looking forward to that. Very excited for that stream. What? Uh, he gifted well, me a game called Squirrel Stapler. And can, can I say uh, real quick on El Paso Elsewhere? It was very nice because Carlos sent me $10. He had a spare $10 lying around. I wonder he where he got me. it from. He sent it to me so I could buy this game since he has, also has access to my library. Where did he get it? Is this a, something I'm missing out? Did he was just being very nice. $10? He sent me $10. Like, true story. Over uh, PayPal or uh, Cash. App. Yeah. He, he gave it to you after I gave him $10 so he would stream separate ways. Oh! Well, Some, I feel like you, just, you, you did this to yourself, Chris Davis. All right, finish gaslighting me so I can go. Yeah, I'm just gaslighting because you should be playing Squirrel Stapler. It's a David Szymanski joint, and it's it's the really last, entertaining. The last one of his games you got me to play on the stream. Iron Lung? Like, Iron Lung was not my thing, so really? I don't know. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, that is wild because that was a, it was that was a fun little game. It was building to a jump scare of like, Re- Remember when we went when when we made you play Anatomy, which is like Carlos's favorite video game, and you were yeah. like, "This is dumb." The, yeah. Iron Lung, very similar energy to I, I, you streaming Iron Lung. I have like, no I'm sorry you don't understand. get it, but it's cool. Up, but... <laughs> yeah, it should, it's <laughs> only an hour. It's less than an hour, Nick. Like it's really good. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you, you said that about uh, Iron Lung, and I didn't like that. But okay, whatever. Yeah, but we also what? said that about Dusk, and you really like that. Uh, I did not like Dusk the first time around. And you learned from your exactly mistakes, and you apologized. I did apologize. Is it the whole, learn. like, uh, you're in a submarine on a on an ocean planet full of blood, and you're like, what never happens? That's <laughs> not metal enough. <laughs> is that, is that, <laughs> it's not realistic enough. No, it's not. <laughs> That's not the, it was, no, that's not what I was okay. alluding to. Okay. I mean, here's the thing. I don't hate Iron Lung. We don't have to I get just, into it. We don't have to I get into it. I just didn't, it is just Were you not. wearing headphones? Yeah, of course I was wearing headphones. I'm kidding. Uh, wearing these exact yeah. headphones I'm wearing right now. All right. I uh, also want to mention, uh, I have made some financially irresponsible decisions we recently. We don't need to hear about all your poor financial decisions. Well, <laughs> well no, this one. Hear. Let's He's mock. betting on the ponies again. I uh, <laughs> oh. I bought. It's not a, gambling if you have a system. <laughs> I was able to get one of the very limited analog transparent pockets, so I I got one of those because I needed it because it was blue what? and I wanted it. What are you talking? About? What is the this? analog oh, yeah. pocket? What the fuck is that? Uh, is that uh? It's the the, it's the a, company that does the really high quality it's clone not the systems. First analog thing he's purchased. It's yeah, overpriced boutique uh, emulator machines. Well, they well, a few years ago they put out like their own version of like the Game Boy, which does advance and Game Gear games and color and all that. 
Uh, mm. And they recently just for they did a very limited release of like transparent ones, like the transparent pl- plastic you ones got you got back in the day. The, because of the fact that it was transparent? Because they had a blue transparent one and oh I needed it. God. What is that? Aren't mean? you also building you, a PC? You say that right like, now? Yes. Like, I am building a PC. I told you this was a like poor a financial decision. You- you know what the worst thing is? Is that Analog is now teasing an announcement on the 16th. And I'm like, is it time? Are they doing the PS1? Are they doing 64? What are you doing? Like, I need well, this. Oh no, no, no. Go back to the blue. Hey, guys. Transparent's guys. not enough. It's the fact that it's blue transparent that gives you a boner or something. What's going on there? Well, I, I wanted, I, I have wanted a pocket, but I wanted to like something to like get me to buy it. Okay. And well, well, okay. Drop a, drop a link in chat so we can see what it looks like. Cause yeah. you know. Yeah. BR back, BRB using my imagination because no pics. What's that gif? <laughs> All right. Uh, my final thought. My final thought for the night. Um, you know, I had something like five. Why ten are you so ago. stressed out? <laughs> I don't understand you. It's Stop all the it. coffee he's been drinking. Stop it. It could be the coffee. Stop it. Not the fucking coffee. We are all um, happy people. That's not blue. Ooh, blue. Scroll down. Boner. There's like six that different colors. Too dark. Boy, I don't like how dark it is. <laughs> you know, I don't know what my final thought is this week. I guess I thought about Assassin's Creed more this week than I have in like three years. That's kind of nice. And now, Ooh. after tonight's conversation, I'm really starting to think more about Hex. Hey. And you know, Your final thought cannot be more Assassin's Creed. I I <laughs> refuse. What is that stick behind you? Don't do it. Don't turn around and look. That would have been funny if I dropped out of the call. But, yeah. <laughs> that actually kind of would have been right there. <laughs> what, what, Just to what make Nick so st- mad. I, you would have seen steam coming out of my ears. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. What's going on with Fumito Ueda? Like, seriously, doesn't it feel wrong that... He doesn't have Brad's a announced hijacking project my, my final out thoughts there. for the week. He doesn't want to hear me say anything about Assassin's Creed. No, I uh, mean, I, that feels bad, right? Because I feel like, I know it's been a long time since The Last Guardian, right? But I feel like it feels bad that it hasn't even been announced. Because I feel like once it's announced, you expect it to be years and years. The fact that we don't even know what he's working on makes me feel bad. What if he's not working on it? What if he just quietly retired? Oh, he didn't. Oh, I mean, we know enough to know he was working on something. But my God, that's a special man that makes special games. And, you know, well, oh, I recommend like a recent Jacob Geller thing uh, about Tears of the Kingdom and like uh, like sunlight and stuff. If you haven't seen that video, because a lot of what he says is kind of how I felt about the original pre remake Shadow of the Colossus. But alas. Man, you know, speaking of uh, of YouTube video essay content creators that are really good, after last week's episode, Folding Ideas uploaded a new mm-hmm. documentary. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. it's pretty good. It's pretty mm-hmm. good. It's all about the GameStop thing, uh, the GameStop meme stock mm-hmm. thing. Didn't yeah. they make a movie? Yeah, they, they did. It's called Dumb Money. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Did you? Did you? Uh, did That's you watch the right. video? It was pretty good. Guys, yeah. Anything? I'm wrapping up. Okay. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thanks for listening. Love you. you should stop drinking coffee. I, yeah. here's, I want, before I wrap this podcast up, I want everybody here who's on this podcast with me in this call to listen to the words coming out of my mouth. Nobody turn, nobody stop recording. Okay. Okay. Until we've done another roll call. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, Guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. Um, again, reminder, next week, Tuesday. So actually, our next show is less than a week away. Uh, so Tuesday night going forward is our new rec- recording night. Again, if you're a listener, be sure to check out the survey. We'd really, really appreciate your input. You can find the link in the announcements channel in Discord or the show notes for this episode. Um, it should take less than a minute. We'd really appreciate your input. And... Uh, we're coming up on some pretty big games, right? We got Spider-Man 2 next Friday, Alan Wake 2 the week after that, uh, Super Mario Wonder next week as well. That's also on Friday. Yeah. Um, 7 out of 10. Sonic <laughs> Superstars. Okay, I mean, a, honestly, the hottest, hottest, hottest October release 
You is don't that even believe that, Chris. Lunacid. Lunacid. Lunacid is coming out of early access. The end oh, of shit. Anyways, uh, guys, it may seem like we're whine- 2023 is winding down, but there's still a lot to talk about. So we will, of course, in traditional four player podcast fashion, be back to talk about said video games. Um, in the meantime, uh, join our Discord at discord.gg slash four player and uh, be good to each other. Play video games. Good night.